paradigm of absolute control. And that's why we're just out here doing simple things, pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural. And this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. And that's why they want to try to keep us out of it. I'm angry. I've had enough of these people. Little bones of Christian murder scum. There were giant death factories keeping babies alive. You said in that body part. What more do you need to know about these people? I go out and face these scum. They literally crawl out from under rocks. They have green looking skin. And they run around screaming, We love Satan. We want to eat babies. I have them on video. Hillary's in the creepy, weird six of men. She sleeps in the same room with that creepy weird old woman whose mother wears a hood over her head. What the hell? That woman number one is ugly. Imagine how bad she smells, man. I'm told her and Obama just stink. Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. Fire pot and the goblins are hobbling round, coming after us. My spirit gets close to that evil, and I feel it go. Ah, ah, ah. We're such self centered crap, we don't even know it's had itself rising up against us. Millions of pointed people of the very worst type, and I'm so pissed. Gonna stab your daughter at the mall. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna stab your wife, your son. Ooh. We're gonna stab you with a butcher knife. And then the police chief is gonna say, We love our Somalis. We love our Muslims. Oh, they're so good. Oh, they're so sweet. I was watching Fox News. What's up, you beautiful, delicious bitches? I hope you're ready for a poppin' show with two degenerates, filthy bigots. <laughs> Welcome to CamelCast 82, the real 82, not the fake 82 that wasn't real last time. It's the real 82 with our guest, it's uh, Gundam. I've been chasing him for a long time, been chasing this man down, and we finally got a boy on. And we're going to bring him up in just a second. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for the last show um, when I announced the deal with the racing, the, the Daytona deal with the uh, ARCA series, the NASCAR series. Um, if you're new here, I, I, I'm a NASCAR driver. It's I know it's weird. It, I, some people don't know. It's weird. It's very new. I just got approved by NASCAR last weekend. Um, so I'm racing the Daytona ARCA 200. February 17th in Florida. Um, so if you are in Florida, get on it, doggone it. And every single Red Boy uh, Super Chat, I get up until like a few days before the race. 
because I have to print stuff, you know. Um, it will be on the trunk lid of my race car at Daytona. It'll be on national TV. It's on. It'll be on Fox Sports One, February seventeenth. Um, so every single Red Boy that I get will be on the trunk. We already have si- fourteen names, sixteen, seventeen names on it from last show. So thank you guys so much. Um, I really appreciate that. It's gonna be so awesome, so fun. I'm so looking forward to it, and I'm so thankful for everybody at ARCA and NASCAR that uh, have helped me get to this point. Um, so my first ever race is February 17th, exactly one month from today. Um, they're building a brand new car. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we got a lot of subject matter to talk about tonight. We, uh, I was on Gundam show just now and we were talking about a lot of dating stuff. So that's going to obviously happen probably. And, uh, we'll talk about Ray star Wars, the rumor mill of it getting canceled. And now Lucasfilm saying that's BS, which is disheartening. And then of course, Ubisoft and their DRM, their, their, uh, telling their consumer base they should get used to not keeping their games. They should get used to losing access to their games they purchased. So Ubisoft looks dumb as hell. And to be fair, it's Ubisoft. Who cares, really? Ubisoft hasn't been revelant, relevant, revelant, they haven't been revelant in years. Um, but let's hit these uh, first two Super Chats um, before old Gundam gets here. Billy Hatcher says... Glad you two are together. Saw the first part of Gundam's channel. And now we're here and Hollywood can't make movies because they're out of ideas and keep rebooting everything. It's all the ESG money, son. That's how this works. That's how this works. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate you. That's just how it is. It's the first pink boy of the stream. First pink boy already putting it on my face. And I love it. The smell of it. Mm. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate you, my friend. We'll keep you bad. Another pink boy. It's a Gundam. Hell yeah, Daytona. Now I got to cook a fillet and eggs. Hell yeah, Daytona's happening. I talked to the team today, yesterday, and I'm sure I'll talk to them tomorrow. Getting everything ironed out to get. We got a new motor coming in. Got a new car being built. Everything from the ground up. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much. We'll keep you bad. And Billy Hatch are the first two pink boys of the stream. And Craig, five Canada which is about 87 cents American. Thank you so much, Craig. I appreciate that. Thank you. You get five CAD to Camelot. Well, I appreciate that. It ain't much, but it's an honest uh, uh, 20 minutes work. Um, so thank you guys so much for all the support and all the love. Welcome to Camelcast. And I hope you guys um, have already subscribed because we're going to have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, so Dark Shadow says, so he really does NASCAR? Yes. 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 If you live in uh, Florida, I'll be racing the Daytona 200 uh, that Saturday. It's the day right before the Daytona 500. Um, so you'll get to see me go in circles fast. Meow. It is pretty scary. But it's also, once you get once you get past, it's, it's, it's a duck-to-water type situation. Once you get past a couple of laps, because you know you think about it, right? You're like at Daytona going 180 miles an hour. It's terrifying at first. It feels like you're going a gajillion miles an hour. Um, but after three to four laps, it your brain adjusts, and it's nothing anymore. Um, so you just have to give it hell. And uh, Daytona, was it's real fun. It's really, really fun. So um, what's the death rate of a rookie NASCAR drivers? Uh, I, don't, I think zero, maybe. Unless Adam Petty back in the day was a rookie. I don't remember. People don't die very often. It's been a long time. So we'll see. Um, I think Gundam's taking a shit. Yes, Gundam is taking a shit right now. Um, he's he texts me and said he's taking a shit. <laughs> so he'll be joining any second now. Um, Daytona turns are known for being dangerous. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. The cars are very very safe. So I'll have my my Hans device on. I'll have all the stuff required. Catastrophe became a member. Thank you, Catastrophe. I love you. I appreciate you becoming a YouTube mender. Mender and uh, Jesus de Villa gifting one membership. Thank you so much to Malti Maldi, by the way. Um, and dead Fred Fred says, Let's go, Camelot. Can't wait for this episode. I hope I wasn't a downer going to stream. I was just hungry. I was, I was just hungry. You're hungry. I've been a fan for a while and just changed my name on YouTube to be more anonymous, dude. You're all good, baby. You did not down me at all. But the man that will down me is it's a Gundam. What's up, dude? Oh, uh, let me bring my Gila Mulvaney. <laughs> oh, look how beautiful. Look oh, how lovely. beautiful and stunning. God, every article, Gundam, every article. And you know they're engineered just to piss my ass off because I'll be scrolling, doom scrolling, and I'll just see the article. 
And it's like, Dylan Mulvaney stuns at the whatever event. And I'm like, are you shitting me? Stuns? I, I, I see that you're not experiencing trans joy right now. Let me try again. <laughs> yeah. Stuns. You know they wrote that headline just to get me to comment some bullshit, right? They they that that was the whole design was they wanted to get they wanted to get me to comment some crazy shit. Cause I'm gonna do it. I fall for it every time too. Every time. Stuns. I've been following Dylan for years and it is like watching a phoenix arise. Before mm -hmm. Dylan was just a gay man. Then slowly Dylan unfolded they them herself. <laughs> <laughs> like a Cadbury bunny egg full of progressive ideas that spilled out all over the lap of America. And before you knew it, Dylan was getting surgery to look like an 80 year old woman. Could you, would, would you, would huh? you, if, if huh? there was a bunch of sponsors that lined up like Bud Light and they're like, here's $5 million. Would you like just go down the, the path and just, just put the face on and just do the shit and just make the money. And Wait, then, put, put the face on. What do you mean, like makeup and stuff? Yeah, just like kind of like you know, soft transition. Wait, whoa, soft transition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know. Dylan so like, so like, put on makeup and stuff and look like a chick. Yeah, that's the soft transition. Now, before in the good old days, they used to call that a sweet transvestite. Yeah. For transsexual Transylvania, um. You know, for the money at this point with the way life is going, I would probably do it for the cash. I mean, I did it in rock bands for far less money, like three hundred dollar yeah. gigs, thinking I'm David fucking Bowie. Yeah, I would do it. I would one hundred percent. Now I can't. But I'm I do. I get to man. keep being me. Do I keep? Do I get to keep being the same piece of shit that I am? Because I'm very used to being garbage. Maybe, but you'd have to do it behind closed doors. Because then you, because you'd have to be like, oh, I have to be Gerard from like the completionist. Yeah. Okay, what happens if I slip? Because I've got to slip. You still get the initial money from all like the sponsorships, though. I would go for it then, because I'm going to yeah. slip, and then when I go down, you know, and people go, "He said something that was phobic," and I could look at the camera, you know, like this, and be like, "Yeah, fucking right, I did it." <laughs> yeah, you already made five million dollars. Who cares? Yeah, like uh, that's fuck you money. Yeah, dude, I'd be all about it. I do it in a heartbeat. I had a guy in my chat one time said he wouldn't, and this is very simple, by the way. I said jokingly, but it is true that I would say whatever political statement required to me. Like if a company was like, here's $20 million. All you have to do is say like, you support whatever ideal on stage and then walk off and you're done and you get the money. Yeah. But like, I'm like, frankly, yeah, I would do it like a hundred times. Like, of course you, we do. Like I kind of have to do that now with like the shit I have to do just to make a living because of YouTube. It would be a bigger payday. Yeah. And this guy in the chat was like, I would never. Yeah, everybody's morals out. And I'm like, bitch, you wouldn't because it's not the opportunity's not real. If yeah. someone put 20 million dollars in front of your face, you probably suck a dick. I know I would. It's like people who yell about like admittedly, I make fun of Twitch thoughts often. But well, okay, I'm not a good example because I did have like some Twitch thoughts offer to bang me, but I didn't trust them. And then there was one that hit me up and she was hot. She was really hot. I'll admit she was hot. Uh, she wears cat ears, so that doesn't really <laughs> that doesn't really skim it down for you. But she was like, okay, like we have to release a sex tape. She had this whole fucking marketing wow. plan. And I'm just like, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. No, not, not but like, ass. No. I think most people would make the jump on some of these girls or $20 million. Like that's a lot of money, even by today's yeah. standards. Yeah. And, that would, I could ride my entire, my entire NASCAR career. Cause it would be, it wouldn't be like the high end shit, like cup series stuff. It would be Arca and truck. I could do my entire career easily with 20 million dollars just done that'd be it One yeah the i i guess i could see your point like i would probably be stupid enough i would probably be 100 percent stupid enough to waste enough money to do a, a wsbk team for one year just a race and look like an asshole at the end of the yeah. grid you know yeah you know make johnny rea crash and end his career and then become universally hated all over the world or some shit <laughs> that yeah. slow piece of shit killed johnny rea Oh, wait, my producer isn't here for me to ask. Can I say that? Yes. Okay, <laughs> fuck it. It's your show. No, the uh, the thing is, like, that's that's all you, if when it comes to money, you can do that kind of shit. I mean, that's that's actually how motorsports works. Currently. Yes, exactly. Like, if I you're know. every single driver or a racer of every single 
Motorsport. That's kind of a large motorsport. Their their father is the CEO of the sponsor of the car they're driving. Nepotism. That's how, that's how it's always. It, that's how it's been for the last 25, 30 years. There is no Earnhardt anymore. There is no Jeff Gordon that drove sprint cars and then just. Ernie him. Irving, who's that? Fuck him. Yeah, there's those guys are gone. They're long gone. So um, it's pretty much understood that when you get to NASCAR, you you have to you know fund the rides you're running. And but if you can get some solid sponsorships, then that's where everything changes. The issue is for normal people, you don't really have access to that. I have people that watch my show that have companies, and they'll be like, "I'll jump on board, hell," and that helps me a lot. Um, but the I'll give you a person, sticker to put on your car with my uh, insignia on it. It'd be beautiful. Make sure that you crash with the the sticker. <laughs> Very prominent in the crash. I want to see that. Yeah, just right in the middle of the camera. My like all fucked up and gnarled, and it says something like, "It's a bum fuck." What's this? <laughs> What is this? Oh, it's something. It's a champion of the LGBTQ movement. Which I am more an ally. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get even more support because that's how that works. For some reason, it's like I don't know. When it comes to companies or auto sport, you just you just go there. They generally have a weird rule, right? They like don't be political at all, and like that's kind of how most sports have been for a long time. But oh, now yeah. it's don't be political unless it's like super leftism stuff. Then you're fine. For some reason, I don't know what how that happened. But at some point that happened. And um, I remember when uh, in NASCAR, they some guy had like a Trump car for like a second. And NASCAR banded him like after that one race or something. And they're like, you can't do political statements anymore. As but he was making America great again. He was doing it. He was doing great. So they banned it. And then the next race, there was a driver that had a BLM car. And their, you know, their, their justification was, well, it's it's a human rights. It's about human rights, not about political organizations. I don't like bitch. You can just say that. You could say that always about leftism. Well, it's all about human rights. It's fine. You could always do that. You could always say that. It's silly. It's just yeah, yeah. It's really making the it's really making move to the Philippines look good or Argentina right now. Yeah, you can move. I want to go Germany. somewhere and be fucking normal for a change. You know. Yeah, where you can go get a hooker and she's not very expensive, and then you can slap her. The good old American pastime. Yeah, like in the 50s and 60s when your wife would talk back to you after you just dumped a load in your secretary and you get home and she's like, where you been? You, it's it's six o'clock and you just slap her. You just turn into Frank Sinatra, which I'd love <laughs> to play a song, but we can't. My, my way. way. Just That's slap. too like mainstream. You got to do something like Mylene Baby. Yeah, you know, she comes in the house. What's wrong with you? Do, 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 <laughs> do, do, do. Mylene Baby, tall and thin. Five feet seven of bones and skin. I told you I was losing the weight, Charles. <laughs> no fat bitches. No. Now, see, we talked about this on the show earlier. Like, it was a mistake when that girl came over and she was fat. But that I was a know. huge mistake. I did not know. I was already three shots deep. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take one for the team. I've never been that high in my life, and I've been on heroin, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I shit you not. I got... I got two pumps in and I was like, why did I do this? Why? Cause it was just, well, I was looking down and it was just gelatinous. There was no form. There was a smell about it. God, it was wrong. Oh rough. my God. <laughs> and I thought I had a dark history. Oh, it was dark, especially the ring. of. See, Rath. You didn't finish your story on my stream, which would have probably made the chat swing from what they were like. Oh my God. Cat hair on your dick to, Oh, yeah. he's boning fat girls. that smell like a dumpster. Yeah. It was a dumpster. It's like bacteria or something. And you know how, like, I don't know what it is about fat people, but she had that discoloration on her crack, like going all the way. It was rough, man. Well, you need to watch more 600 pound life to understand the discoloration and the lift note issues. And uh, fuck, what the hell is it called where the person has like fat that turns into like this big ball in their skin? Yeah. I'm it's sure chat knows. Lymphedemas. That's it. Yeah. I never heard of lymphedema until I found Dr. Now. Yeah, and he's like, "What? It's like, why are you so fat?" It's like, oh, yeah, he, oh, he he talks oh, almost like an elf. Yeah, you need to understand that you need to cut back on your calorie intake and eat your cookies. <laughs> yeah, and low he, high protein, low fat diet. Listen here, doctor. Now I'm trying. I followed your diet, and I'm not losing any weight. And he's like, "Obviously, why not. you're overweight. If like, you were following the diet, you would have lost 120 pounds in six months." I had a protein shake for lunch. Was protein chicks in the diet? I don't remember writing that. And then it just goes all downhill from there. 
Yeah. And then it shows like the scene of them pulling into Popeyes right before they go into the way in. That's always the best. <laughs> when they're like, I might as well go out in a blaze of glory. It's like, like you, you expect a cowboy to say that after he's been caught by the law, man, stealing all that gold and shit. He's like, I'm going out one last time. I forgot my arms don't work. Shit. I'm like doing these guns. So- Fucking A, I'll fix this later. They just keep doing it. They just keep going and uh, just keep eating. And uh, the worst ones, there was one where it was just this fat guy. He's on like on a bed and he is just fat as hell. And he finally, the very end of the episode, starts losing weight. Like and he very, drops dead. And he just dies. Yeah, I saw that episode. It was like season six. Yeah, he was like, he was like, yeah, I'm really excited about the journey and it's starting to really look, I'm starting to finally get progress. It's, I can't wait for the future. And then it just goes grayscale and it's like, uh, 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 you know, Ger- whatever his name was, like you're gonna say Gerard. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Gerard, but it was a Spanish guy. He was like, it was like Hernando Sanchez uh, died six six weeks later, and I'm like, damn. He just said he wanted the future. <laughs> well, most of these people wait till literally they're on death's door before they make a move. Yeah, yeah, that's what people. I was talking about Boogie in my last show, and people in the chat were like, "Is he? If he just lost weight, he'd be fine." And I'm like, "No, he's 49. It's the damage is done. He's older than 49, ain't he?" Yeah, he's, he's in his 50s. He's about to turn 50, I think. Yeah. Well, and, good for him picking up a skinny 20-year-old chick. It's hard for a skinny 20-year-old guy to get a skinny 20-year-old chick. God bless him. You know something's wrong with her, though. Oh, well, yeah, we could say that. Yeah, something does seem a little off. And there's something out. There's something going on. So what do you think it is? Like, my assistant says autism. I was going to say autism. Yeah. Well, it's say. unanimous. I was going to say extreme autism. <laughs> I was going to say she's secretly a heroin addict because she's very thin. She is very thin. But it's like the Love on the Spectrum. You ever seen that show? Yes. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. That, that Love on the Spectrum girl. is actually a sweet show, honestly. That's how I feel. Because those people seem like genuinely good people. They're, and I they're think... so beautiful. And the only one, the only person I didn't like was the, the Asian lady that was so obsessed with uh, animation. And it would oh, be a guy yeah. would walk up and be like, I'm a scientist. I'm, you know, kind of autistic, but um, I can make a lot of money and I'm very charming. Look at my abs. And she's like, oh, great. Do you like animation? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, I don't see it. I can't be with you. And I'm like, no one is into animation except for you and like eight other people. Like, what are you, who are you looking for? Well, I got to give her cut of some slack. She does have severe autism. She like her, <laughs> her her entire existence is a square root of anime. So even can we like play a commercial? So like a trailer, so people know what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah. So it let, let's see. That might I, be the move to make. Uh, love on the spectrum animation girl. That's the first thing that pops up. It's always the yeah. Because she met a dude that was also autistic, and he liked animation, and she thought she was ready to fall in love, and then she broke up with him, and he was crying and shit. It was wild. He was like, "How could you do this to me?" Now I take <laughs> issue when it's normal women on TikTok that have this level of mental autism, and there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Um it's oh uh, yeah. It's what a hard. cutie. I've tried. Like I've 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 hung out with girls that are a little autistic and they are gorgeous. And I'm like, you know what? I did you're as is I feel that I, this feels weird. This feels wrong. It feels no, weird. I can't I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> he is so attractive. I mean, not just attractive from the looks, but also like we have something in common. Helping people of it's gonna be at look at this poor bastard. <laughs> He does have bad posture, but he has <laughs> autism, so that makes sense. He's just staring at the wall. God <laughs> bless him. He's having a blast. I wish I was that content with my wall. Yeah, but he's, uh, yeah, this is the, different this is the guy that cries that. because, he, yeah, uh, he is kind of weird when she's like, uh, she's like, I kind of like you. He's like, he just starts freaking out. He's like, are you, yeah, real? because oh, like, God. well, if I remember correctly, he like had some vision that they would work out or something. So it's like, that TikTok brain where everything is preordained. Yeah. Oh God. You gotta get to know the person for who they are. Because you know I told you that I'm in spirituality and all that. Right? Yes, you sure do. Tell me about that. <laughs> Tell me about it, please. You know, I love it. <laughs> when I think about it, the amount of women that are on TikTok talking about spirituality, maybe they do have autism. We may have stumbled on something here. It's the constellation girls. That are like, oh, of course you're a Pisces. I'm like, bitch, I've read the paper, and it says the same thing. It's so vague. It's like, you're a Pisces. You're kind of brave, but sometimes you're not as brave. And you're very, you have a good personality, but sometimes you want to be alone. And I'm like, that's fucking everybody. It's not just a Pisces. They think they're so damn smart. What's your sign? As soon as a girl asks me that, I'm just like, just take your draws off so we can end this. 
Just get this over with. It's like literally, I listen to you. You okay? I am in love with you. God! <laughs> you are so hot. <laughs> I no! hope he got laid. <laughs> I wonder what it was. I wonder if he, like, he had sex with her and it was just weird. I hope that he got some action. Oh, he definitely did. Because at the end of the episode, it says they get back. To, like It's like so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so got back together and broke up again so he definitely like like weaseled her a little well that's the thing that's the difference between down with love which is the down syndrome version of the show i didn't see that one. Oh my god so uh it's it's way better it's it's fucked but anyways there's uh there's the the down syndrome version of the show you can tell oh, wait, maybe i did because like, there's a dude playing for like uh wwe toys right maybe i don't remember it was just none of them knew like what sex was at all they didn't even know they were all they're all in their 30s and 40s and they have well no that's kids. nice you know that way they can have genuine connections yes but you can't talk like you could even tell them what sex is and they're just like i don't know and then they just ignore it and move on um but these people these autistic people they can easily they can like especially the women they can easily just have sex normal like you know i have an idea which is probably dark but i bet there's a market for fake autistic porn because people seem to be getting off to like brother and sister porn Somebody could really corner the market on this. Yeah, but you couldn't do Down syndrome porn, though, because, like, you can tell. Well, you'd have to be able to act, and I don't think porn stars are good at that. <laughs> the Down syndrome one is so sad because there's these, this guy and this girl, and they start dating. And, of course, they love each other, you know, first sight. And they go to a, like, a sex therapist, and the therapist lady is like, do you guys, like, how do you guys have sex? Like, what do you, what is that like for you? And she's like... The girl's like, yeah, I love sex with this guy right here. And she like slaps his leg and she, the lady like reads through it immediately. And she's like, what is sex to you? And she was like, you know, like pranking each other. Pranking. Just pranking. What type of pranks are they playing? I don't know. But it has was it like surprise, but sex. It was apparent. They had no idea. And like, she was like, maybe you could like take her pants off or like touch her, touch her butt. And they were like, gross, ooh. And I'm like, oh, this is fucked up. They're like six-year-olds. It's brutal. And this show is making them get in love with each other, go on vacations and sleep in the same bed. But they don't bone, so it's totally wholesome. It's totally fine. Until it does happen. And then it, the, the world shatters. Like, what happens? Is there lawsuits involved? Like, I don't think... <laughs> no, probably like a, a super downs child is born. And then you get Chris Chan. And we could use a new Chris Chan. The old one is getting a little long in the tooth. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's tiring. I'm tired. Of I'm him. ready for an upgraded Chan. There is a there was actually speaking of that, um, uh -oh. there, was a, there was a Down syndrome guy that he had Down syndrome and he had three sons and two of them didn't have Down syndrome. Wow. Imagine being 20 years old and your dad's like trying to like lay down the law. You know, and he's like, queen your womb. I'd be like, dad, well, what? Shut at up. 20, you could like, <laughs> at 20, I would probably leave a Down syndrome home personally. Yeah. No, it'd just be funny. Be like, don't tell telling you to not do a thing. I'm like, Dad, are you serious, Dad? Like, well, if you love your father, you're not going to rip into him for being like borderline retarded because it probably <laughs> hurts him. Like, you would make your dad cry, dude. Like, really? Would you do would that, cry. bro? He would definitely cry. No, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, if I had a Down syndrome father, I wouldn't try and make him weep. <laughs> like it's cool dad don't worry about it i'm gonna get that room cleaned uh we'll do some painting buddy <laughs> you know yeah you, you're gonna have a break a, a, a moment of weakness though and break at one point and say some fucked up shit i've already <laughs> got like a goofball family members that don't have any mental issues other than being lazy i've mastered the art of being able to speak to people that you'd really like to say what you truly feel god at least uh, my entire family are all just uh, on meth I don't know if it's an Alabama thing, but every single person that I know that I'm related to is on meth. Well, I got to say opiates, man. What a high. What a high. <laughs> I do not remember. I do not recommend doing them, though. Let's get that out there. The lows are terrible. Do not do it unless you have no reason to live. Yeah, I would be all about it. But I have, uh, I have to take regular drug tests through NASCAR. So <laughs> they won't let you do Could it. Could you imagine the PR that you would get? being the first meth nascar driver like if you won on meth oh my god that would fry people you'd have brain. to it would have to happen on meth like you'd have to get out of the car and be like i'm tripping balls Woo! yeah 
Man. You have to be completely zonked. Yeah. And I saw all them it. zombies driving behind me. I had to get the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> I mean, you can make the joke. As long as you pass the, the test, you can make the joke. But also, the, it's like real PC, so you probably get laid into. Um, yeah, it'll be over. Speaking of getting laid into, Hayden. Oh, my God. Says, hell, Camelot. Hell, Papa Gundam. Hell, chat with a $100 super chat and i have to add him to the list that's like how it's supposed to work but our soundboard broke today i hate god damn it i hate it it like ruins everything you're like now i'm a failure I'm a i don't failure. even think I've, i thought i was a failure for a long time dude i do this youtube shit and i'm like i'm a fucking I'm, I'm done it's over they finally figured out how to kill my channel it's gonna suck until the election's over oh i i, I remember thinking done. about that in 2020 i'll say oh no it's over i'm fucked i'm i, I say retard all the time i'm fucked the same yeah. thing happened to me but like uh, i got fucking hammered in 2020 i thought my channel was fully dead they banned leafy and shadow banned the shit out of me there was but, hmm? there, there was a weird time period i don't know if I, it was in 2022 or 2021 where my videos went from getting 70 to 80k per which is pretty good for me to like 9k or 5k and it was yes. like a three month window and it was just brutal yeah terrible yeah i was like i don't know what happened i don't know what happened thank you hayden by the way every single red boy from here until a week and a half before the race in daytona will is be going to heroin NASCAR and heroin <laughs> let me tell you while high on this stuff i was writing what i thought was the greatest music i'd ever composed i thought it was jimmy page bro I took like a piece of wood and I started attaching like strings to it and tried to play bow guitar. And I recorded everything thinking it was the greatest shit ever. Then the next day I woke up hungover, which is why I say don't do heroin because the lows are so terrible. Like I couldn't even get out of bed. I was like crawling and my phone is going off and my job is calling me. Where the fuck are you? It was like a Cobra moment, except <laughs> instead of me like trying to dye my hair purple, I was strung out on drugs. And I was Jesus. like, I can't use my legs, man. He's That's like, what... did you take that heroin last night? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're going to be fucking laid out. Then he yeah. just hung up the phone. You can't work like that anymore. Not in today's world. The, I've had so many you know, people or acquaintances be like, you need to try this thing. And it's like, but I will let you know the day after is going to be the worst day of your life. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do that then. I don't want to. That sucks. Like, I just got past getting hangovers. I can like casually drink and not get a hangover at all anymore. But God, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. What I think the Native Molly? American blood gives me that ability. Like I've been getting smashed since uh, New Year's Day, just drinking every day heavily, just knocking them back. Felt nothing. So there is like some cool parts to having Native American blood. That sounds so great. Yeah. I, I, uh, I got to a point where I was drinking every day, just like casually just drinking every single day. I did it for like two months and I would not even kind of even have an inkling of a hangover. And then I stopped for, I did my cut diet to where I was cutting 30 pounds. Oh yeah. Just stopped drinking and I didn't drink for three months and I lost 30 pounds and then I drank and had a hangover. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm the absolute worst at cutting. I can bulk with the best of them, but I can't cut to save my life. I suck at it. Oh, I'm, I'm real good at cutting. I don't know why. I just get into the mind space and then the two to three months goes by real fast. And then I'm good. Now, yeah. before I know it, I'm eating enough sushi for like three people. <laughs> <laughs> Neanderthal, thank you so much for your $50 super chat. Real quick, beautiful man. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate you. Every super chat that's $100 or over is going to be on my ARCA car at Daytona, February 17th. Don't forget, Neanderthal. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, your name will be next to mine. <coughs> doubt it. <laughs> It'll be next to your sticker. Yeah, the sticker I want on the hood, very prominent, you know, or wherever there's damage, wherever you think you're going to get hit. It's yeah. symbolic. It's going to be beautiful. No, I will. I will 100 percent put a sticker on my car. It'd be great. Great. Now I got to like design stickers. I think I'll start doing the uh, it's a waifu sticker, which yeah. is the half naked chick with it. Can you have a half naked chick on a NASCAR? Oh, or yeah. is that politically incorrect? Oh, yeah. As long as you say she's trans, you'll yeah. be fine. That's what you got to yeah. do. It's part of the culture. Can't, there we can't go. Out of the culture, man. No, oh. that's just how this works. They say white people don't have culture. Like I grew up in a trailer park. We, that's pretty we, cultured. I ran from Rottweilers and shit and got bit 
by dogs. That's culture. Survival. I agree. Completely. It's survival. very hood, really. Yeah. Frankly, I, I'm going to say something that would be seen as controversial, but living in the hood is like being trailer trash, in my opinion. It's, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. There's gunfights. There's knife fights. There's drug use. There's crime. There's infidelity. There's fucking paternity issues. Tell me there's the difference. Oh, well, the white uh, trailer people don't have twerking. So I guess there's that. I'm pretty good at twerking. Well, I'm only interested in women twerking, so we're just going to move on. From here. Women love that shit. If I'm in a club and I start twerking, do women love it? No, nope, that's uh, definitely something I wouldn't do. I wouldn't even twerk to save Maine. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of twerking, when uh, when did you when did you start YouTube? You said it, was, it took you years to get to 100K, right? Uh, I created the channel, I guess, in 2015. Then I got serious in November of 2016 because originally I was just doing video game mods. Yeah. Because that was fun. And uh, then I just slowly deteriorated into being interested in what was going on because computer companies were fucking us with our graphics cards. Bethesda was fucking up games. And before you know it, it was like a, a slope of talking about shit that was fucked up until I'm where I am now. Yeah. Complaining about Hollywood. <laughs> Complaining about Star Wars. God, Star Wars is such a such a sad situation. There was Star a, Wars is like a family member that's lived too long and you wish they'd die. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my grandma. My God, why are you still alive? It's time to go, Nana. <laughs> it's time. Here's the real story. When my grandmother had a stroke, um, she was in the hospital bed all fucked up. We also sued the uh big pharma company that gave her the drugs that fucked her up and put her in a stroke. Uh, man, there's a long story of how I guess the case got a settlement. We got paid next to nothing. One of my stupid aunts took all the money and then blew it. And now she's broke and on the edge of being homeless. There's a whole thing there. But anyway, as my grandmother's in the fucking hospital, but all fucked up and she couldn't move or speak or anything. My aunt was in her ear like, let go. It's time to go. It's okay. So that's what triggered that memory for me. Jesus. From you. <laughs> so people do do that. My uh, when my grandma passed away, she had a she fell and she went to the, this is like uh, July of 2019. She fell, broke her hip, had to go to the hospital. She was in rough shape before this anyway. And everybody was there and she was like looking at me and looking at people. But she like it's like she had no idea what was going on. It's terrifying. And then she like I, my, my mom maybe like hold her hand and she was squeezing my hand. And I was like, this feels like, this feels, this is more, it's like morbid for some weird reason. And then she died like that day. It's crazy. Whenever my grandmother fell over, a snub nosed pistol will fall out of her dress. She was like Danny DeVito from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, pulling guns on people. <laughs> so the character of Frank Reynolds is actually very realistic. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like my grandma, the one I was just talking about. She went to clubs, hooked up with random dudes in her 60s. She would uh, make me watch Golden Girls with her and she would just get hammered. She just I think it. every old lady forces you to watch Golden Girls as a kid. Yeah, she forced me and she would just eat peppers. She would like eat like pickled peppers and then just smash like natty lots until she was like belligerent. And so basically would... your grandmother took herself out like King Cobra's doing now. Yeah. Yeah. And she would hide in the cellar, man. My grandma was in the cellar. Dude, she, it was terrifying. It was like one of those creepy rooms. I was a kid, you know. She would go in the cellar and she would cut the breaker to the house off. And I would be in my room, like play, like in this room that we always stayed in. And I would play, like, I was playing like Star Wars Obi Wan on regular Xbox, I think. And she turned the breaker off. So it's just completely silent and blackness in the house. It is at nighttime. And she would just start blood curdling screaming and begging for help. So I would like in tears be going through my house or her 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 house, and I'm in, in tears just grandma, and she's just screaming. And right when I get to the cellar door and I put my hand on it, she just stops. And then I would open the door and she would just full speed run out of it and like grab me, and I'd be fucking it just scaring the shit out of me, right? And I would just be in t just hysterically crying because I was a kid, you know. Yeah, it's old people from back then did shit like that to you. They prepared us for the world realistically. Yeah, she was crazy. And she'd be like, you want me to make you mac and cheese? And I'm like, yeah. Please. Well, I'm done fucking with you, baby. You want some <laughs> mac and Melody Mac? She gonna call you the F word now because you're crying. <laughs> it was terrifying. She's crazy. Crazy ass. She'd take us to graveyards at like midnight um, and uh, 
there was this old graveyard where her parents were buried and it was completely desolate. You could barely get there. And she had an old truck and she'd climb over all these like woods and shit. And uh, we'd finally get to the graveyard, which is on this hill. It's like movie esque. So it's like some Witcher three bullshit. Yeah. And we get up there and she would turn the truck off and it's like dark. And she'd be like, let me get out and set up like the, like picnic. We do like really late night picnics out there. And she would just leave the truck and go hide behind a tree. Yeah. I wouldn't trust like how, like you must've been like one of the most gullible kids in the fucking planet. Dude, she it would have been like, famous. pull me twice, Grandma. Shame on me. She got us all the time, man. When you're like seven and you hear old ladies screaming in the dark, like never, like you never get used to that shit for some reason because she has the old lady shrill scream. Yeah, help me! I've fallen and I can't get up. And you're like, oh Lord, Grandma, Nana, I'm coming. Please, God, don't don't Where's do this life. Where's your life alert? God, it was terrifying. And then she died, and then that was it. Um, she claimed she had sex with a uh, Elvis. I was going to say Elvis. Yeah. Because every old lady has that story. <laughs> she claims she had sex with Elvis, and that's my mom's father was Elvis. Okay. Now we're just stretching. <laughs> so you see, stretch- you don't have raccoon eyes, so there's no truth to this rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandpappy was Elvis. I had sex with him in, in the 60s. I'm like, okay, Grandma. Thank you. Grandma was so good. Uh, great. I loved her. She was a good person. Um, but speaking of grandmas, so there was this rumor going around. Uh, the other day, I saw you you quote tweeted it about the Ray Star Wars either trilogy or movies getting canceled, and I got really excited. And now it looks like Lucasfilm said that that was just that was just a rumor, and I feel like that sucks because we could have dodged a giant a giant bullet. And I'm sad. Well, that. I don't think they would have the guts to remove it now that they've said it's a, a female directed Star Wars. I don't care what they do, you know they'll do it, and everybody will make money off of it. I don't care. I'll just cash in. I'll watch it. It'll suck. I'll talk about how it sucks. Somebody who's either an MCU fan or super fucking progressive will tell me I'm a bigot. But I'll be laughing all the way to the bank while the progressive eats ramen noodles. And claims that they're not not real fans. You're not a real fan. What What do you think it was that, like, if you could do an elevator spill, what do you think it was that just completely killed Star Wars. Because I was a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, I even, you know, obviously I was a kid when, you know, Phantom Menace and Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith came out. And I and I still think Revenge of the Sith is a solid film. But I, I'm going to have to agree with you. Like, the fight scene alone at the end it's was like awesome. just, it's godlike yeah. compared to what we get now. The, they really cared about the choreography. I mean, even in Phantom well, Menace. George Lucas was involved. Yeah. That the the uh, duel of fates with Qui Gon and Obi Wan and Darth Maul is the greatest shit in the world. I still go back and we'll just watch that whole se- segment um, with the other stuff edited out. It's just like the full ass fight. It's so beautiful. And in the new movies, it's they don't. It's like they don't even like. There's no choreography. They just like hit each other with like the lightsabers. And for some reason, no one needs training. Yeah, you and know it's it's, it's <laughs> just. <laughs> Bro, I, I fucking hate Star Wars. And yeah. it's weird for me to say that. And I'm surrounded by Star Wars helmets right now. Like, I have over my head a film cast Darth Vader A&H helmet. And I've decided to start rebuilding a life-size Darth Vader from A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back because that's just who the fuck I am. And I already have a life-size Stormtrooper, but I might do an A&H hero suit. For those who don't know, the hero suit is the one that Luke Skywalker wore and has the lower brow that looks like it's a fucking angry Stormtrooper helmet. So I guess I'm still kind of a fan, but I also hate it. So maybe I just hate the new Star Wars because it just it has no value. It has no meaning. It's now being told by people that have no idea what the fuck the story was about or what it means. They just basically see it as a brand that they can use to be a mouthpiece to push whatever progressive ideal they have. Star Wars has always been inclusive to women. I don't know on what planet that it just all of a sudden didn't exist, but it did. The fact that we have this new activist feminist directing is a real stupid move, in my opinion. Because there's no way in hell she's going to tell a story that we're actually interested in. No. And uh, it's hard to get excited anymore. It's kind of like you hear Star Wars is coming out. And before it used to be like it was an event. Remember the lines that used to be for the Phantom Menace's shit? Like they were blocks long. There are people dressed up as Star Wars characters. It was a fucking party in a scene. Now, like you hear Star Wars is coming out. You're like, God, I wish that shit would just go the fuck away. Like just stop. 
it's oh. it's it's so weird how different everything was. I remember going to see like the Phantom Menace and Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith, and there's just lines of people around the theater. Everybody's dressed up. There's and, positive vibes, dude. Yeah, and it was like everybody was like talking about just talking about different Star Wars stuff, and they they would have like stuff with them, like old memorabilia. And then it was this old theater that was just one building that had like two screens, and everybody's just lined up out the back to see Star Wars. It was, just, and then everybody, even when you like, even watching the Phantom Menace when you watched it in theaters, everybody's like leaving and like buzzing, trying to justify that they actually like the film. Um, but it was just you know it was an event. And it was an event back then with video games completely unrelated. Like when you oh yeah, Battlefront Two came out, and that shit yeah. was like Battlefront One and Two was like the game yeah. to play. Yeah, it was the game. Yeah, and they were the, these giant releases at GameStop at midnight, and everybody's showing up. Everybody's dressed up. Everybody's it, having fun. You know what? It, there's just no passion. It's no. like there's zero passion, and the people that are producing the content also have zero passion. Everything they make is an allegory for some weird political or social movement. It's a well, one. they want to control the cultural zeitgeist, and they're trying to do it through movies, film, television. They want to control how we speak so they can control how we think. And it's not exactly going as they planned because people are pushing back. People are tired. People are bored. People aren't interested in this. The whole point of entertainment is escapism. And for some reason, they don't want you to escape ever. And frankly, now is more of a time to escape than ever. We're on the edge of another world war. Buying a house literally means you have to have a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. Yeah. And meanwhile, I have some fucking progressive asshole trying to dress me down because I like a male fantasy. Well, fuck you, buddy. You better believe I have a male fantasy. It buy on me for wanting to escape the misery that is my life. If you're a heterosexual male today in America, and if you're white, God forbid, good luck with that. Thank God I'm brown. I get a little bit of a pass, but not much. You need to escape. Dating sucks. You make no money. Food's expensive. Gas is expensive. Everywhere you turn, you're somehow the problem. And meanwhile, you just woke up today and you barely took a shit. And somehow the world's issues fall on you. Fuck me if I want to see a Star Wars film where Luke Skywalker is actually a good guy. How fucking rude of me. We need to put the focus on women. In fact, let's have fat female Jedis. We need absolute inclusivity. You know what we need? We need transsexual, non-binary Jedis in order for there to be true gender parity. Because Lord knows those people would fight at the drop of a hat to save someone, right? Yeah, as long as somebody tweeted about it. Yes, internet warriors. <laughs> as long as they get a little taste of that clout. And there's a way you could include certain things without making it just over the, the the whole point that's annoying for me is how overt everything is like it's in your you, face you could like for example a good example of how they did it decent was e uh, evil dead rise the movie was all right but there was a trans character and there was obviously like the other daughter was gay and they never even mentioned it kind of it's just they and they both just brutally die just brutally die and it's never they never elaborate like there's no it's not you know there's not that one scene where somebody says a thing and they're like, of course you're saying that it's hard for me being a trans person in this country. Like they never had that scene where they have to overtly say that, well, I'm a blah, blah, blah. Of course you're going to blah, blah, blah. Where they have to say what they're identified, like they identify as and do all these things and then shame down a person that's saying something to them. About yeah, the usual thing that you see on almost every Disney movie now where there's like this dressing down of somebody because of their privilege. Yep. Yep. It's a, Oh God. Don't leave a it's there. It's the moment I like to call the uh, don't leave a man to do a woman's job moment where they have like it's like a woman and a guy fails is at his mission. and He's all muscly and has guns and shit. And she's like, oh, don't let a man do a woman's job. And then she goes out and starts fist fighting and beating people's ass. And I'm like, this is this is lame. I'm tired of this moment in movies. <laughs> it's like the only moment you would have that's better is if she put a slick red dress on and went and tempted the enemies and manipulated them because that's what women can do they did it in james bond films for years they just put the on a femme fatale. lord knows yeah. dating you've been tempted by some chick who's gotten you to do stupid shit oh yeah you know this conversation just made me realize i totally forgot to add something in my echo review where she's doing the fight scene in the uh boxing ring with that dude and she's beating him up 
Yeah. I forgot to edit that scene in and then flip to this female pro boxer that fought an amateur male boxer. She got knocked the fuck out so fast. Yeah. It's I can't believe it. Fuck. People don't realize people like you, 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 you've been, you've been to the gym, you've been involved. You know, I go to the gym. People don't realize, especially normies like, and I, I don't, I don't mean that in a negative way, but people think, cause I've had, dude, I've had people in the chat yell at me over this shit. I'm like, you can take a male that is doesn't train, doesn't do anything, and put them in the ring with a woman that is a trained fighter, and the guy will likely win, it, it, because it's the sheer difference in strength, in like, in, in in physical attributes. Uh, a I can a man can go to the gym right now, a normal man, on average, and they can bench a plate. My buddy Karis, we were talking about this the other day at the at the at the at Daytona. Um, he was at Daytona with me, and we went to the gym, and he benched a plate. And he doesn't, you know, do heavy lifting. He doesn't, you know, he's he's not really super in it um, as far as, you know, benching and stuff. And he did a plate. First try, whoop, whoop, do a plate immediately. I've been training girls for years that can't get past 25s. Now imagine a girl that doesn't work out, can't do a bar. The guy that doesn't work, doesn't like work that exercise is doing 135 pounds. A girl can't even do 20. Now, what if the guy is involved at in any type of weightlifting or training and he's going up against this woman? You, he, she's dead. She's dead. It's like so you you're telling me truck. Brie Larson is not an absolute physical specimen. Well, her toes are. Those things are fucked. Looks like somebody freaking hit him with a hammer for like two hours. You do have a point. I used to date. I my one of my living girlfriends was like a gym rat, completely <laughs> fit. She had abs, you know, the whole nine yards. She was fit like a dude at that point because she wanted to become a female bodybuilder. And I remember she started wrestling me once. And I just didn't care. Cause I don't care. And she's like, look how weak you are. Cause you quit going to the gym. And I'm like, you know, I'm just letting you win. Cause I don't care. And she goes, Oh yeah, prove it. So I overpower and pin her down with not that much effort. And she starts screaming, how the fuck are you still stronger than me? And I'm like, I'm a dude. Yeah. You're <laughs> a lion, bro. There's, I, I dated a girl that was freaking Jack. Now her deadlift was very impressive. She was on some shit though, but she could deadlift 385. Like for reps, she's pretty strong. Um, but for bench, she could barely get a plate. And she was jacked as a woman. She was freaking a monster. Now she was the real question is, did she have an oversized clit that looked like an undersized cock? Yeah. And okay, she, dude, it was like it was like she was pouring like a faucet, though. If you even rubbed up against her, she was like pouring like a faucet. It's crazy. Um, but no, uh, she would do a, a plate on bench and a plate in like a five and get like one or two reps. And I can bench four, I can bench four oh five. And I don't even take gear. I can just bench 405. Like I've been benches my lift. It's my favorite lift. And there's not a that that's that's more than like the the records in especially in the weight class that would be considered mine. For I would I would have the world record right now as a woman. Oh yeah. I think Zuby did that shit, didn't he? He did. Yes. So yeah, if, if, if there's not a woman on this planet, I don't care how trade, especially the ones in movies that weigh 105 pounds and they're like fist fighting dudes that are 250 pounds, bro. He ain't feeling that shit. It's gonna annoy him like a bug bite. I'm sorry. He gonna slap you once and you're dead. You're so have you're telling me Echo with her fake foot can't kick someone in the head and knock them clean out? No, no. Well, in a, in a Disney show, yes, because <laughs> you know she's powerful, she's strong, and kind of looks like a foot. Yeah, they like the uh, the comic Echo is really attractive. The TV show Echo does look like your standard fair Native American woman you meet on a res. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, it's I don't know what this this war on hot women is. It's so strange. Only said, in America. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I watch. I love uh, a lot of like Korean shows, and I like there's like Japanese shows like uh, Borderlands. Loved that. Um, all of us are dead. I think was what the other one was called. And movies from that area, like South Korean films, every every woman's just beautiful. They're just beautiful. Well, South Korea, like it's kind of unfair in the sense of the South Koreans are so used to plastic surgery. Like everybody gets it. That's why they're all in debt. Yeah, it's kind of uh, wild. It's wild to me. And then you you turn on a movie that's based in America, and like every woman is either fat or awful looking. Or very annoying. Always. Like, you could, there's some people that could argue Brie Larson's attractive. I don't really find her attractive. So I mean, it might just be her personality, to be honest. Brie but, Larson's like, all right, like, she she's looked good enough as a black dress once. 
It's like you have to ignore her feet and her personality, and you have to catch her when she's on the red carpet. Oh. But if, like, she's not on the red carpet, then she's a total gassed up mid. Yeah. If you saw her get out of the shower and she has, like, a towel on and she's walking around her house, she'd look like a little monster. Yeah, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't be, like, fucking dizzy from the blood throat flow to your pants, that's for sure. Yeah. I think, I think 25-year-old Jennifer Lawrence could have done that. I don't even remember what the fuck she looks like. When that, when the fappening happened and all those nudes of her dropped. Can we uh, get that uh, a photo up? <laughs> but not looked, like the nudes. She looked great. There was not a. I've heard of the fappening, but I didn't know what it's about. Yeah, it was just a bunch of celebrities. Their iClouds got hacked, so like tons of celebrities' nudes got released. And oh, Jennifer this Warren, annoying chick. Warren, she had like a billion released, and her everything. Her vagina looks great. Her ass looks great. Her midsection looks great. Her boobs look great. Her shoulders look great. Her face looks great. I'm like, damn, girl. That's but, probably know, how she keeps getting work then. Yeah, because she was she, she finds every Weinstein possible and lets him dump a load. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, that's the shit. I probably do that. Fuck it. Yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I know how the game I, works. I'm gonna say like I'm not overly attracted to her unless like she's covered in makeup. But well, that's you know, every girl. Yeah. I'm not sitting there saying like I'm some hot dude though. It's like a. I think I'm just reaching this point of jaded where it's just kind of like eh, I don't care. Like yeah. a woman has to jump through hoops to get me remotely interested these days. Yeah, that's kind of how it is, actually, isn't it? Like I've noticed that I um, I've had opportunities arise over and over, and I'll choose to just stay home. Yeah, it's I'll like be like too much hassle. I'm gonna make a fire. I'm f- going through the Hobbit movies that I don't even really care about because I just watched Lord of the Rings, and now I have to go through the fucking Hobbit films, which aren't even that good. But I had to do it, and uh, I'm just sitting beside the fire and have a girl text me. And she's like, "Hey, you, you should come over. We should hang out." And I'm just like, "I oh, know. I'm actually I'm doing something on YouTube tonight, and I'm not." So. Yeah, it does seem like it's the season for ex girlfriends to come up and see where you're at in life. Oh, they they fucking they brutal with my ass because <laughs> four years ago I was working a dead end job, um, and now I'm like put on my Facebook. I'm like, hey, making my first NASCAR start, Daytona. These girls are like, what the fuck's happening? I'm like, yeah, bitch, what'd you do this for? You fucked up. I deleted all my social medias the second like uh, I started getting some sort of traction on YouTube because I knew ex girlfriends would come looking for me. Uh, not even that I've had that happen, but I've also had like people I had a guy message me from like middle school. I haven't seen. And he asked to be my manager. Why? <laughs> and this was, this was recently, by the way, this wasn't like at the, at the beginning. Did he at least have like a PowerPoint or anything. No, he, just said, he was like, we should work together. I'll, I can like uh, manage and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. Like, what do you manage? Did you have any questions? I was, I was, I, I don't, I think, I don't think I responded actually. No, I didn't respond. Um, he messaged me like a few months prior and just said, Hey, I, I noticed you're, you're doing good on YouTube. Congratulations. And I was like, Oh, thanks, man. And then he messaged me and said, Hey, I sh- you know, let's work together. I'll be your manager, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, No, nah, I didn't, I just didn't respond. And that dude res- messaged me like the next day and was just freaking the fuck out. He's like, You're a piece of shit. Your content's terrible. Like, you're fucking fat and all, all this random shit. And I was like, What the fuck? That is not how you get a job. Yeah, so I screen capped it and just posted to Facebook because all of his mutual friends were like probably my mutual friends. He's come from high school. And I posted that screenshot on Facebook and lit his ass up. It was the greatest shit ever. Rule number one in the 48 Laws of Power, never outshine the master. (laughs) That's what you do. Speaking of the master, Karis! Give me money! Another pink boy. Holy mechanized feminism, Batman. It's a Gundam. Thank you, Karis. I love you. I appreciate you. You the man. Thank you so much. We'll read the 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 rest of the super chats here in a little bit, but I just always like to get the pinks and reds because they smell good when they're on your face. A little bit of that gym funk. You know what I'm talking about? When a girl goes to the gym, doesn't go too hard, comes back, she's trying to get a shower. I'm like, no. You're a wild animal, dude. I love it. I've come to that conclusion. Dude, it's it's pheromones. It's like I don't know what it's it, just a little bit. Like when a girl like lays down, she you know, she went to work, came home. And she has a little bit of that female, like just a little bit of that female bo, like underarm. I'm like dying. The, does the woman appear from like behind the curtain, like Dylan Mulvaney, when she's ready for you after a hard workout? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. Don't I'm wash. Like, first place you can sit is my face. I'll clear. Oh it my god, Stacy, you fucking little treat, you absolute succulent animal. Oh. I'm gonna oh. lick you from your asshole to your taint. Oh <laughs> god. I don't know, dude. I, it's it's something that if I told myself ten years ago, if I told twenty four year old Cody 
that I was gonna I was gonna be this way, dude. I like I just dive more into gen degeneracy. Like the older I get, I'm like I don't care. Like eat ass, yeah, hundred percent. Every I don't care. Let's go. Nah, I saw a dude eat ass and he came back around and he had pink eye. That that warded me off it. Yeah, I welcome it. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? And he's like, ah, uh, I ate ass and I got pink eye, dude. Like, Don't get fucking near me, you asshole. That we have a phrase for that in Alabama. It's called risking it for the biscuit. <laughs> you gotta risk it for the biscuit sometime, gun them. Go down there. Sometimes, you know, like I've look, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I've been down there. I've mm -hmm. I've done the D and it's, it's it's usually pretty good. I wouldn't eat my ass. That would oh, be, yeah. Uh -huh. That would be the worst thing I could ever do. <laughs> that says a lot about your hygiene. <laughs> you know that shit looks is probably fucked. Oh, well, you know, like being a guy, I work out a lot, do some deadlifts, do some squats. Got I definitely have hemorrhoids. So what? <laughs> you have to be like dodging that shit. Damn, dude. I don't even know what the fuck to say to you, bro. <laughs> You're like, I have hemorrhoids, there's shit all over them. <laughs> And I'm sitting here like with all these fancy soaps in my bathroom made in Brazil. Like it's important that I smell and look good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I just, I just use a bar of soap <laughs> and drag it loosely across my bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't even bother with a lather. Fuck it. No. You're Fuck like, it. the ladies love my pheromones. Yeah. They're cool about it. That's the you secret. are a Southern man. That's the secret, bro. People are sitting here like your fucking accent's fake. I'm like, yeah, I'm beginning to think this is who he is. It's just who I am, man. It's and women like that. I have, I shit you not, I've had women like hug me because they haven't seen me in a while, or maybe I'm like, we're gonna hang out with them at the movies, and I and I had to get a quick workout in because I work out like seven days a week. It's a mental thing. I'll shoot myself if I don't. It's weird. So yeah, I gotta I'm, give it to you. I'm lucky if I can get three in. I'm snowed in, and I haven't been in four days. Because my city apparently uh, my taxes don't mean nothing. But anyways, so I'll get I'll go get a quick workout, meet up with a girl at the movies. She'll like hug on me, and she's like, "Oh wow, you smell so good." And I'm like, "That's weird." And I say that every time. That's always my response. I'm like, "That's weird." That is true. That's weird. She's like, "It's yeah, very you true." You just smell like a man, and I'm like, "Well, good," because that is what I am. Can't help it. Unapologetically. Yeah, yeah. you're never gonna have the problem that Destiny has because you're just all macho. Can't can sniff it on you. Yeah. Oh, poor Destiny. What a bitch. <laughs> he went on. He went on podcast defending his trifling hoe ass, and she immediately finds an even frailer, small, effeminate man and leaves his ass. Well, you got to give it to the dollar store, Ezra Miller. It looks like he's got a low body fat count, and he dresses better. That is true, and he has kind of a cool accent a little bit. Yeah, you need an accent. Like I knew this dude that worked at a guitar shop. I think his name was James or some shit. Normal guy, New York. One day I go to the shop. He's British. So well, how's it going, Mike? And I'm saying, yeah. what the bloody hell is this? I use a lot of British slang myself, but I don't go, what the bloody hell is this? A Yorkshire son of a bitch, yes. And he just starts going into this. And I pull my friends over. I go, Doug, what the fuck is going on with Jim? Oh, he's British now. And it was, I guess, when you think about it, he was he was before his time because he identified as a British person, even though he was born in upstate New York. Oh, and he lived his truth. So he had to crawl so the trans community could run now that I think about it. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine my my girl, PDH, um, who's one of my mods and always in my chats sometimes. Um, I know her in real life. We hang out all the time. And she told me. That she faked an Australian accent in front in front of a new group of friends, and she had to keep it going forever, and it was just like a joke at first, and then she like kept it going forever, and she's like, "Fuck, why am I doing this? This is terrible. I don't want to do this anymore." So she and just got ran, out of hand. She just randomly, she was too deep, bro. She, she got. She finally one day told him, "She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm just. I'm you just, know what she could have done because it had <laughs> been so long. She could have totally parlayed it into her normal accent, and people go, "What happened to your accent?" She just go, you know. I feel more like it works that I speak like this here or something. And it would have would worked. Yeah. But moral of the story is the guy who went British got a girlfriend. So it works. Just lie more. Yeah. Just the whole world's more. full of lies. You can do more. I mean, every politician, that's their entire like program. Just lie about everything. Always. Lie. Look at the president. Lies all the time. Don't Everything's fine. Those tweets. I'm so happy when I see every single tweet 
that his team tweets every single tweet it has a community notes on it. That's like, this is completely ass backwards and not true at all. I love it. It's like inflation's down three to da, da, da. And it's like, yeah, down from like a billion percent doesn't mean it's down. It just means it's down from like the highest it's ever been for a little bit. And it will always have that community notes. He's a liar. I'm like, oh, this is great. I love this shit. God, the only thing I look forward to if things play out like I would like them. I don't really care for having like two 80-year-old dudes that are f- battling, but I do, I, I look forward to like a just a meltdown. You know, social media meltdown, how everybody's going to say everybody's going to be in chains and we all have to leave America because Trump won. I look no, forward the same to shit is, I don't even pay that shit attention no more. I like the memes. <laughs> the memes are so fun. God, we're going to have like so many memes of screaming people. It's going to be great. That's and then it happen. I just I want the economy to do better. That's all I care yeah. about. The economy to do better and I want stop I want stuff to stop being retarded. I think that we shouldn't really be focusing on 6% of the population at the cost of everyone else. 100%. I want to yeah. I want to play a video game that isn't a piece of shit. Like Spider-Man 2 on PlayStation 5. Like uh I had a woman over, I'm playing it and <laughs> the dialogue's so bad, dude. It's so bad that I was getting embarrassed I was playing it in front of her. And she goes, so this is the famous PlayStation 5 that's better than Nintendo and Mario. And I had no rebuttal. I'm like, listen, I got to help Georgie with his gay prom date. (laughs) It's like when you play anything Nintendo or hell, watch the Mario movie. There wasn't an ounce of that shit. It was just Mario was doing Mario shit. And then the movie went off. And I'm like, yeah, it made a billion. And then like Bob Iger comes out and goes, apparently that there was still room to make money in this economy with films. Yeah, Bob, no shit. It's called making a film where people could just enjoy it. And it has none of this garbage. I think like the problem with Echo is that they were in too deep. And I bet they were hoping that the strike would last longer so they could cancel, putting it out. But it didn't. And they're just kind of like, okay, fuck it, whatever. Put it out in January, throw all the episodes out, call it a day. And then people will forget when we put out Daredevil, which is being reshot and rewritten now anyway, because the first run was so bad that they literally snuffed it out like crib death. Jesus. It's, it, you know, it's the, the, when I look at all this happening, because I watch your channel, I watch Disparoo. That's pretty much the two channels I watch when it's long form and any, any kind of, of long form content is you and Disparoo and Critical Drinker. And I watch all these things just keep happening. And then I see Bob Iger come out and say, maybe putting in all this messaging is hurting our films. And everybody's like, well, yeah. And then they just keep doing it. And I'm like, what's the point of him saying this every year? Man, I hope that hostile takeover goes through. I bet the old guy who wants to take it over will fix Disney. And it's really weird being an American now with international friends because everybody like just pities us now. It's it's so weird to just have people, you know, from other countries it's going like, you got to get out of there. It's all fucked up or laughing at how stupid everything is. And I can't I can't go. We're number one anymore because we're not. No, we're number one in being clown shoes, though. Yeah, you know, it's it's strange because I remember being a teenager and being like. People in other countries would be like wanting to come to America. America yes, is America. And now when I'm talking to somebody somebody like joins the discord or somebody joins like my or comments on YouTube or messages me on Twitter. And they're like, you know, uh, like somebody that doesn't know who I am. Like, where, where are you from? And I'm just like, Ooh, I don't want to, I, I kind of don't want to say, <laughs> like, I'm like, uh, I don't, like, if I'm I seriously, overseas, I don't want to, if I, if I go to Japan, like, Oh, where are you from? And I'm just going to be like, Oh, uh, Oh, Canada. I'm from Canada, Canada. Yeah. Hey mate from Canada. Yeah. Hey, Hey, please. Please, please don't think I'm from America. I don't know. It's just weird. And it's mainly, it's not anything to do with like America in general. It's the, like you said, adhering to 6% of the like insane population that's going in. Like we, our entire country is like a slave to it. Now Canada is too, but Canada has oh, yeah. not as many people, obviously. Yeah. And, I wouldn't go to Canada. If I had to choose between America and Canada, America wins. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I would just, I, that that's one thing that I'm thankful for is living in Alabama. Because Alabama is super chill, it's it, the, the COVID stuff and wasn't ever it was never a thing. No one wore mask. I noticed uh, that in the South, like Tennessee and stuff, Nashville, people are still out playing music, having yeah. fun. Meanwhile, I'm in New York, and I swear to God, it felt like I was marching to a gulag. Sometimes they have like these face scanners for you. You have to wear a mask. 
they were we had little pictures of where you're supposed to stand between each other. And I'm like, I fucking hate this state. I hate it. Yeah. It they they closed my gym for like two weeks. And I was working out at home and the gym owner texted me because I've been going there for over 10 years. He texts me and he's like, hey, I'm just going to open the gym. And if they say anything, I'll just tell them to fuck off. And he just opened the gym and it never closed again. And we, I, I went to the gym every day. Nothing changed. I never wore a mask. The only time I wore a mask was when I was at the airport, obviously. And yeah. I say it's a smart move considering like, well, for New York, like uh, the issue with New York here is we got so many fucking people coming here. So many people. And then you add in the fact that Texas is like sending migrants here because our retards in power are like, oh, it's a sanctuary state. I remember when they were doing that, dude. I was screaming at the screen. I'm like, Hoko, you retarded bitch. What are you doing? Like New York still owes money from COVID, bro. And guess who's paying it back? The taxpayer. Because they overborrowed from the Fed. So how the fuck do you know that we're in a huge deficit and then think, oh, we'll take on a bunch of migrants and we can afford it. Now it's even worse. And they're sitting there like this could destroy New York. Like, bro, New York has been on the ragged edge for a while since you assholes came into power. And now it's worse than ever. And anyone with money, literally 100,000 people have left in the last two years of New York. Anyone with cash that can leave, leaves. I'm waiting. The second the interest rate drops, I'm running out of this state. I'm running over the New York border like a goddamn migrant. Dude, that's what that's I have friends in New York that say that shit. They're like, yeah, I'm leaving as soon as possible. As soon as I could get into a place where I can leave, I'm leaving. And it's funny because when I talk to girls or I meet girls or even, you know, guys at the gym and they had just moved here, it's always from New York or California. And our it's population, just ungodly expensive here. Yeah. And our population is just increasing over and over. My property taxes went up like six thousand percent. Jesus fuck. And uh, I don't know what's going on. And uh, it's just it, it every every road that used to just be like plains of like grass are just apartment buildings like lining every road in our city now because the population is increasing so fast because people are leaving California and leaving. The only thing I can hope for you is that those weren't the people that voted these assholes in because I can tell you right now I didn't vote for these fucking dickheads. No. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's almost like it doesn't mean anything uh, in certain areas. It's like, how do these people keep winning? Um, you, I would just, I fully would think naturally that there would be an election and it's just, every state is just red or, you know what I'm saying? Or, or well, I'll opinions. give you the same like quote that I got when Hochul and the, the other mayor won and then they're both Democrats. Uh, when I was like, how the fuck does she do it with only three fucking grids? And then some asshole that, you know, is obviously progressive goes, um, Atlantis if both stupid people do. I mean, that's. The default answer. Yeah. And gerrymandering. It's so sad. It's like in Alabama. Well, Alabama, we had a, Demo a Democrat win uh, the Senate or something in Alabama, um, which was really strange. I think his name was Doug Jones or something or Doug something. Oh, and I reflects the influx of people. Yeah, it was very weird. Um, but as far as presidential elections, it's been read for probably since the beginning of time. As to be expected, I think if there isn't some kind of weird like rigging i think it should it'll be overwhelming this time things can just be overwhelmingly red and i am not optimistic that anything will change anyway uh, i can only hope because i don't think our economy can survive any more of this stupidity like yeah. a woman is a treasurer no recipe for disaster <laughs> <laughs> a woman in any position of power it's terrible it's a terrible idea and we say in my country to give a woman woman power is like to give a gun to a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's completely true. Don't need to do uh, it. We're banned. Repeal the 19th. <laughs> this all started going downhill as soon as the damn 19th amendment was added. You know, when I think about like the suffragettes and the women's movement, could you imagine what, you know, even the feminists of the 1970s would think of the current wave of feminism, where it's like, if a woman has kids in a family, that's slavery, but selling pictures of her asshole or having sex with random people on OnlyFans is liberation. I wonder what would they say? They if only say, I had a time machine. They would want to go back. They would be like, oops, we, we made a wrong turn. Because the entire movement, in my opinion, was just to get 
forty five percent uh people into the workforce so they could have oh, yeah. more right. money in taxes. No that doubt. Our point. Um but it was it it was I think it was originally seen as a choice. Like you had a choice. You could either A have a family or B go into the workforce. And now every single woman that's up below the age of 30 looks down on women that like want to have a family. As yeah, it's like just, media. yeah, it's like a whole war on Twitter going around. It's called Trad Wives. I just learned about it today. So I was looking at the videos and I kind of feel like they feel kind of fake, but I really don't care that much. But the amount of women being upset with these women that are wearing like homemaker outfits that will look immediately from the 50s, talking about raising kids and just cooking at home. It's just like such a weird thing. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me how they could be that upset with something that doesn't outwardly affect them. You know, like you could just not look at this chick's TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. And like it, there, a lot of them are probably lying. But still, it there should be a movement for women to aspire to nurture because that's what their whole biology is about it's nurturing so just as, aspiring to fit more in with your biology and having a loving family i feel like that would be that's a good thing to teach women but they don't well, as i get older i have noticed this weird trend of like women that are literally in their late 30s all of a sudden just just doing this hard pivot shift from not wanting kids to wanting kids and if you're dating <laughs> around that sort of range it's like a minefield you, you meet these chicks and they're like i'm not here to play games i'm looking for a husband and i'm ready to have a family and it's like but you're 38 it's a little late it's over yeah you, it's the same girl it's like it's like uh I'm 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 not into games and I don't uh hook up with anybody. If you're if we're having sex, we have to be in a committed relationship or married. And I'm like, bitch, you are 36 and you've been married twice and you've been through 600 dudes. I'm not paying more for what you gave out for free. I'm just not doing it. I think uh that's the new trend where I heard about uh women reclaiming their virginity. I haven't looked too deep into it because there's only so much stupid shit I can watch in a day before I I get tired and I have existential crises. Like maybe I should go back to working in a warehouse. Yeah. It's like, like, <laughs> it's like you, the, you can't, you going to reclaim your virginity. Are, are you going to get surgery on your, yeah, that's actually a thing. They need to get this meat wallet surgery immediately. That's also a thing. Yeah. They, well, they can be, <laughs> they can de labia it or de like labia minor it. I've been watching botched. So I'm up on this. <laughs> Yeah, you can slice little wings off that look like freaking roast beef flying everywhere. But still, I mean, I guess, they're, yeah, you could probably make it a little bit squeezier, I guess. Do some Kegel stuff. But you can't fix the face. Those pores are huge. We live in such a dystopian timeline. I call it the digital dark age. Oh, my gosh. It's a uh, man-made, uh, what is it? Man-made horrors beyond our comprehension. Yeah, I saw that too on Botched. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh like a oh my i, I don't even know. like a transsexual vagina i was thing. about to say that yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like can we talk about it yeah now it, the yeah. funny thing is i didn't look this up so i'm on a date with a girl and she just shows it to me she's like yeah this is the chicken in the bot surgery that's trans and i gotta say it was probably one of the most horrifying things i've ever seen in my life and i've seen a lot of shit like, I've seen people get hit by cars. I've watched friends die in motorcycle crashes. I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. And I think that one broke me. It's it's like nightmare fuel. It's And it's the, the worst part about it is, especially when you, when you, it's kind of like nice to be ignorant. Because when you yes. learn more about it, it gets way more terrifying. It Like, I, I, I read like a big post from somebody that, transitioned and then oh, i'm not looking to read nothing it was sprung on me i'm minding my business in those instances well it was like a it was like i like went through tr like transitioning i got yeah. i got the surgery and that was years ago like 10 years ago and i regret it here's my story and like the most horrifying shit it's like there's hair growing inside of it you have to keep oh my god i just said i didn't care to know God, you have to keep like a damn thing inside there so it doesn't collapse and try to grow. But oh, God, it's fucking fucked, man. It's so fucked. And they don't tell hey, you wrong face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're <laughs> we're crashing. <laughs> they don't tell you that shit. Like, but like this person, I was reading this post on Reddit. It's like, they didn't tell me any of this. It's like, yeah. Like, what did you think was going to happen? You're going to have a like fat penis now? No, bro. That's not how this works. Yeah, it, 
It's it's a wound. You got a giant wound. It's so sad. It's so brutal. Speaking of brutal, Disco Cobra. What a pink boy says, finally got Gundam on. Nice. Missed the first half. Wait for Jeremy to start streaming. Did you uh, do the 24-hour stream yet? No. Uh, do you plan, have any plan, plan, anything planned for it? Saw Gundam uh, stream for the first time. Documentary guy. Yeah, Mike Clum. Mike Clum's great. I've messaged Mike Clum on my main Twitter before it got banned, and then it got banned. And I was like, well, fuck. Um, thank you, Disco Cobra. Um, yeah, I plan on doing my 24-hour stream uh, shortly. Um, I haven't thought about it. I just got home from Daytona, and it was such a long weekend. Um, but it is coming. Thank you so much for the pink boy. We are 480 from Fight Milk. Make sure you like the show. We ain't got too much left. So like the show. Give it some love. Thank you so much, Disco Cobra. Hayden says, so So can we listen to a song from one of my favorite games of all time again? What are you talking about? Must be. Oh, uh, you're talking about. That's what you're talking about. Thank you, Hayden. I appreciate you. That's the Naked Snake song where I take my shirt off and jiggle my titties. Thank you, Hayden. I love you, man. I appreciate you for your pink boy. Yes, it is going to happen. The Naked Snake will happen. Uh, Charles, two of my favorite YouTubers, keep up the good work. Get swole, Gundam. Camelot, stay swole. Thank you, Charles. I've been eating a lot of pizza uh, the last <laughs> week. I've been snowed in, and all I have is this goofy-ass pizza I bought from Costco, and it's there's like five freaking pizzas in there. And I, that's all I've been eating because I'm out of everything. Because I got back from Daytona, and I was like, I'll go to Costco. When I get back from Daytona, it snowed in for four days. Haven't been able to do shit. Wait, you don't have no snowblower or anything? A truck with, like, uh, no, nothing? No, in, in Alabama, there's no salt trucks. There's no oh, snow, yeah. snow plows. And it got down to, like, one degree yesterday. So all the snow is hard as a rock, and it's just a sheets of, like, glass. And I live on a really tall hill. Ah. So if I pull my truck out on that hill, I'm where I'm going to knock a hole in a house, kill some. Did life. you raise your truck? Oh, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's so silly. It's a Dodge 2500 6.7 Cummins diesel. It's freaking monstrous. Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not about to pull out on the hill and just slide down and die. I've been uh, slowly working on a tundra. A tundra. I'll oh. put like a bull bar on this shit. Yeah, I'm just I gotta, gonna like make it as mean as humanly just, possible. Just go, go crazy with it. I have a, I have, the, I have my truck now. I am, I've been thinking about selling it because I got it to haul race cars and then I got, I started getting into NASCAR and other stuff, and now I just drive other people's stuff because I can't drive my stuff because it's old. Um, they, it doesn't work like that. They don't let you drive old cars like in like a spec series. But um, yeah, I was thinking about selling it. I have an R8 that I just got, and I can't even drive it because it's freaking cold, and it's just in my garage, just sitting there rotting. Um, that's what I'd, I've been driving. I drove it every day for a while. Thank you, Charles. Wait, an Audi R8? Yeah. What the fuck? You're making more money than me. No, it's just, it was cheap. But is it used or something? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. It wasn't new. That was... <laughs> it's a smart move, though. Like, you buy a used Audi R8, no woman's going to, like, question you about it. No, no. That's the not. car to get to, like, pick up women. Yeah, it's a it's a great car. Um, It's a beast. It's a monster. It has a manual, a gated manual. Um, So, I love it. Love that damn car. Um, Catastrophe. Don't spend it on meth with a $20 New Zealand. Is that New Zealand money? What was that like seven dollars? Thank you, catastrophe. I appreciate you. Wouldn't New Zealand money be worth more than ours at this point? You would think. You would think. Um, Rob the gun point or fun point says drop some dollar biz on DG Daddy, so I can't leave my boy with nothing. Well, thank you. Awesome listening to you and Gunnar Bro talking out strange. Well, that's actually a good good thing to talk about. Thank you, Rob. I love you. So, um, you you just you just started doing like streaming like live shows like recently, right? Yes, this is literally show number two. Or yeah, one, two. Who who knows? It two weeks. That, you'll I feel like you'll you'll you find out really fast that the support you get through super chats and memberships is so helpful. It's the only reason I can do YouTube. And I've said this a thousand times on my channel. The only reason I can do YouTube full time is because of the support that I get from my small channel. Um and that'll go so far. Uh, with streaming it's why a lot of people move to streaming i did it. i started day one i i put my first video up and like a few people watched it and then i put out like i think 20 more videos and uh, i quit because i was working at walmart as a district manager and it was brutal and i quit for two weeks and then that you know, we were talking about it earlier that one video got grabbed by the algorithm and just went to the moon and every video got 100k after that so i started doing youtube like full-time almost immediately and i started streaming 
I think two weeks in or three weeks in, I started streaming and they had just added the super chat function. They had just added it like the day I started streaming. And it was just, it just always was super supportive. And I'm like, well, goddamn, I can actually do this. Like, I don't have to get a million views per video because that's almost impossible, you know, nowadays. Uh, for me, anyways, I only well, have like three videos that have a million views. For me, personally, um, I started doing streaming because I was told it was a good way to grow the channel. I'm more obsessed with growth than money, I guess. It's mainly, it's a vendetta thing. I know, like, there's been shit that's happened behind the scenes to keep me from hitting a million. So I want to hit a million in spite of those in people. Spot. Yeah, dude. That's my only motivation. Yeah, well, that's good. I'm the type of guy you have to kill to stop. I'm psychotic. I will sacrifice everything to meet my goals. You've had your channel, like, struck unjustly, right? Oh, multiple times. <laughs> what is, like, how, what is the most egregious example of somebody striking your channel? Uh, copyright bullshit, but I usually got that one back. I've, I've gotten hit for hate speech and bigotry. Yeah, because everybody's a goddamn snowflake. Nobody knows how to take a joke. It must be so sad to be growing up in this day and age because nothing's fun. No. Like, think about that shit. You can't prank call places. I used to prank call escort services for kicks, bro. Now what do people do? They get offended when someone misgenders them for their Zzer pronouns and then start reporting to everyone under the sun. I think this person shouldn't be sponsored anymore because they're a bigot. They're as bad as the Nazis. They didn't respect my Zer pronouns. And it's like, who the fuck has Zer pronouns? An asshole in a country that is so privileged you have time to come up with fanciful new ways to describe yourself. You know what children in Africa are doing? They're trying to get a biscuit. But not the biscuit that <laughs> Camelot's looking for. The edible kind that gives you nutrients throughout the day. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know what it is? It's the, it's life being easier the ease of access for information and for food and for anything really has made except like, getting late, except getting late has made depression rates skyrocket and people just create their own problems because they don't have any. So, and it's, you'll notice that all these people that are in these circles are up, upper middle class, usually upper middle class, white, like white women. Yes. Because they and boys too. Yeah. And boys like they just, they, they don't, they don't have any strife. Like they don't have any identity. Yeah. They like, well, I got to create something because I don't have anything. It's like, you know, you could just like become interested in like motorcycles, like start building yeah, cars. Some of the best things you could do is working on your vehicle, man. Some oh. of the best things. There's oh. no greater joy than you, bleeding the brakes out of your own vehicle and not paying some dickhead $800 to do it for you. Unfortunately, I can't have that joy anymore. I have to edit videos 12 hours a fucking day. But let <laughs> me tell you, the smell of a fucking machine being fixed is almost arousal compared to what I have to do now. Oh my gosh. I uh I, I put a new engine in my race car last year because I blew the hell out of the other one. And I dropped a, a new R5 in it. Um NASCAR like cup engine. And I I I it, it I was it was I was learning a lot because I don't do engine swaps very often. I've done everything else. I built the car from the ground up. Everything's new on it. I built all of it. Um I set it up. I just go to old forums from 2003 because the the information for these cars are so proprietary and secretive because all these teams used to compete back in the day so you can't find any information so i had to like i remember i would dm like crew chief from 10 years ago on twitter hoping they would respond i'm like i need some information i don't know what the fuck i'm doing um but i eventually got everything figured out and i dropped an engine in that car and got it all hooked up got everything going made sure everything was right and i was like messing with the distributor for the timing and i had the the uh firing timing for the cylinders backwards and I couldn't get it to fire. And I was trying for days. And I eventually, eventually went, I just like, maybe it's backwards. And I went around and I turned that car on loud, like NASCAR cup car, fucking louder and shit, 800, 900 horsepower. And it fires. I'm like almost in tears when it fires. It's just like, I did all this shit. And like, I'm covered in just black, black face. Just all that time you spend shit. when you fuck up and you're trying to figure out your engine or your brakes. Or the worst is electronics. I fucking hate that oh, shit, dude. Oh, God. I Jesus. hate wiring Having with a, a passion. Man. You're like, have you To find a gremlin, you know? Test lot, poking shit. Please go. <laughs> and then sometimes the issue is a mouse bites a wire or something because my garage is full of these little cock sniffers. But then the second you get it going, there's, there is definitely that relief, this euphoria that now your machine is in perfect working order. And it's, I think it's something a lot of young guys don't get today because. 
I don't feel like there's a lot of masculinity promoted in America anymore. Like how many kids are growing up with like a brother or a father or an uncle that's working on vehicles constantly? Like doing something with your hands as a man is just some natural sort of lizard brain shit you need because yeah. it's a physical accomplishment versus digital accomplishments that don't fucking mean shit. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Suck my dick. No one cares about fucking PUBG anymore. When things are hard and they actually take skill to do, like think about being a, like a nine-year-old or like a 14-year-old or like a woman um, or, <laughs> a <young boy. laughs> or a young boy. and you see people working on engines, working on cars, building things, building motorcycles. I mean, I, my first vehicle I ever built was a motorcycle from the ground up. Had a four cylinder engine. It was a it was a Katana, freaking terrible bike. The freaking center yeah. of gravity was a nightmare. Fall the fuck over on that thing. I wrecked the hell out of it too. Um, but I remember like you know doing all these things that you feel like are almost impossible. Yes. And then you do them. Like you'll take your spark plugs out. You have a little fluid in there. You crank it. It shoots fluid out. You learn all these weird tricks. And then you get proficient at it and then you do it and then you have a running vehicle or like you install like a new thing or a new rear end or new axles or just it, it, something as small as changing your rear end fluid. It like completely rewires your brain to understand that you can accomplish shit if you just do this. Yes. Thing. And it shows you like you can overcome crap. Yeah. And then you can look back and something seems hard. Like oh, this is a shit. I could do this. Like I remember the first time I built a computer and I bought all the parts and I want my friend to come over and build it. This is what started my YouTube channel back in 2015 or so, or 14. And he goes, so you coming over to Bill's computer? And he goes, bro, you literally built, you work in your motorcycle engine. A computer's easier than a motorcycle. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I got off the phone with him and built it. I'm like, wow, this is like Legos compared to that. Yeah. Or it's... would you fuck up? The best is when you fuck up your vehicle. Like when you fuck up your alternator and you have metal shavings because you stripped a bolt that you had to cut into it with a Dremel. And now you got to like put oil in it just to pull oil out to get all the metal shavings to put more in, get it out. Then you got to get magnets to pull out these little bits of metal because if you don't, you fuck your engine for good and you got to get another one. It's just good times. Yeah, it's like running my oil pump on that uh, that race car because we blew the engine and there had there was like old shit in the lines. I just ran, got a, a, a gun, like a screwdriver or whatever, like a power drill. And mm -hmm. just hooked up a, a bit that I cut notches out of so it would fit onto my oil punch drive and i just spun it and then shot oil out for like hours and i would just put more oil in and shoot it out so get all the ex all the gross contaminated shit out didn't matter because the engine exploded almost immediately <laughs> anyway. but um it was like the first race it exploded i'm like god damn it so just two yeah, those moments where you have like those uh sort of uh macgyver moments where you think of this stuff to do and you pray to god it works and it fails anyway and instead Fucking feel it like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. I can't believe this shit's still not working. Goddamn piece of shit. Yeah, Fuck the, this. The alternator on that car, I, I fucking stripped the bolt to the alternator, like just like you said. And I went in and I took it out and I I, I drilled out the hole and then I retapped it a, a larger uh, bolt. Just tapping. Like, I hate tapping. I'm just like, <sighs> and then I, I, so I used a larger bolt on the alternator and it worked. I was like, well, shit. And then the engine exploded. So it didn't matter. But the alternator worked. <laughs> That's just how that works. Um, uh, I had to stop buying, like buying parts online is another bad one. You're trying to save money on OEM shit and you got to tap pieces because the asshole before it broke them off in there and just sold it to you to tell you. Yeah. Oh, that's so much more fun than editing YouTube videos. It's stressful, but it's like a good kind of stress. Yeah. It's it's like, yeah, I'm going to go change off this rear end. It's probably going to take me 40 minutes and it's like 3 a.m. Three hours later. hours later. You're just under there. Please, there's one bolt that's like rounded off. You're like, why is this happening to me? I, I do have fucking seized. I've literally welded like wrenches onto bolts just to get them. To good idea. Because I have a welder in my garage. So I'm just like, buzz, just spin it off. <laughs> I'm like, no, fuck that. I just, I get, if it, if I round off something or something like I'm just, I weld something immediately. That's why I got the welder. Fuck. It's very, it's very easy. Um, Speaking of being very easy, will keep you bad. Hundred dollars. Super chat. That's another name on my Daytona car. Wookie, be bad. He says, look, I need to pick up my name on the trunk. You guys like ebony and ivory, like butter. This is epic. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, um, I will, I'll be, when it's printed and on the car, I'll take a big high pro or a high quality shot of it, of everybody's name on the trunk that supported your boy in his mission to get to NASCAR. Thank you, Wookie. I love you. I appreciate you. Giant red boy. You are the man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, so yeah, I was uh I was at Daytona last week. 
So I, I started racing two years ago because I've always wanted to race, like in full body stock cars. Because I've always been, I'm from Alabama, love NASCAR, you know, back in the day. And um, I bought a car, like a NASCAR Cup car, started racing, getting like these minor weird series. And then I got hired by a team in this other series, started running that series full time for two years. And I was like, you know, really enjoying it. Start, I got way faster. When you first start out, you're like, I was, I got lapped like eight times my first race. I had no idea what the fuck I was. I was like, why are they so fast? By the end of it, I was finishing right behind the leader in the top five you know, every race. So you start learning. And I got a call from a guy that knows me through one of those series and was like, Hey, you want to come get NASCAR approved and run the Daytona test? And I didn't even think it was like a real offer. I was like, I feel like I'm getting scammed, but I was like, fuck it. I just, I had to go to, I had to get a physical. Um, I had to get a dr drug test. I had to do all these things through NASCAR. I had to sign like this release for my health records all this shit and it all worked out i went up there at daytona and went 170 miles an hour craziest shit i've ever experienced um and then the same team was like you should come race the race with us and i'm like well i guess i'm racing the race because nascar approved me for full competition so i was like well i guess i'm gonna race at daytona and it's so weird that two and a half years ago i was kind of thinking about getting into like racing some random shit that i could just find google like a series or something and try to race in it to come in full circle and somehow be racing in a nascar series at 34 years old i'm all i'm already way too old right and it's pretty impressive because like when it comes to motorcycle racing man like they groom them at like four years old yeah so by the time you're 18 you're you're dead in the water you're too old the only guy who overcame that hurdle was max biaggi the roman emperor so to hear you doing this in nascar makes me think wow they must be way more lenient for nascar than motorcycles yeah, it's you basically just you have to they have to approve you at first and they look at your racing experience. They'll go find you online. They'll find they'll They'll call a bunch of people. A bunch of NASCAR guys ran in my series. I ran in like they're a little bit older. So uh, they were all my references. So the of course, whoever's uh, in charge is calling these people, talking to these people. They all give you the green light. And then you have to go do your driving test. So they'll approve you. And then you have to go do a driving test. And then you have to do that. And I had there were so many people like wrecking at this driver's test. There's a lot of young kids. Everyone was like 16 to 17 years old, every single person. And then it was me, <laughs> you know, because like you said, you have to be young and all these kids are young and they're getting up there and they're they're to be fair. They just, they're whoever they, they're involved with their parents are just, they're rich. Right. So they can just buy, they just pay, they just sign a check and it's over. They're good to go. Um, but no, it's uh, it's gonna be very interesting. I'm very, very excited. Um, it is uh, it's very spooky. It's very. <laughs> I didn't, just didn't think I'd be at this point. It's really cool. Um, thank you, Wookie, be bad. And it's because of these people, like Hayden, my boy, says Gundam Tundras are great trucks. I got a 17 Tundra that has lost four grill guards because they rattled off and sheared in half. Um, it's now my strictly work truck at 275 thousand miles. Damn. The Tundras are fucking bulletproof. They like, are. If you can take care of a Tundra, it can go to a million miles. Yeah. The only thing is, wow. like, the frame is garbage if you're in the Rust Belt. So I'm in the Rust Belt. Oh, that sucks, man. That's like, when I was looking at R8s, I was looking specifically at all the ownership records and making sure it was none of none of the ownership records are in the Rust Belt. I'm like, nope, I ain't doing it. You ain't getting my ass. Because that it is crazy. You'll see new newish. 10 year old trucks, their entire like bottom of their trucks are just like falling apart like paper. Yeah, I gotta go wash under the truck and then um and put like uh the protective bullshit on it. I keep forgetting the name of it, X something or other. The Rhino line. Is yeah, that's it. Yeah, like I have I have that stuff on my truck. My trucks, I don't well, I don't know where you gotta do it yearly. Yeah, my I'm in Alabama and Alabama's good place to be lick nothing happens here i had a six i've had tons of 60 had a 64 and a half mustang 66 68 268 mustangs and they all were their whole lives in alabama and they are just in pristine condition every one of them yeah i might have a uh 69 boss 302 on the way now that was the shit so that's what okay so it was a six i think it was a 69 boss or a 70 it's yellow it's beautiful and I was looking at either getting it or the R8. And I got the R8. <laughs> because I've had so many Mustangs in the past, like old, like 
really and i love those cars but i was like i kind of want a supercar because i have never had one and uh, i was looking at the new corvettes the c8s yeah their prices dropped a lot they were crazy for a while they were because they were people they were selling 60 grand above marca or above msrp or whatever sticker. yeah absolutely ridiculous and it's like a two-year wait time which i also find insane so if you buy like a fucking 2020 you're probably just now getting it odds are yeah and i'm like nah no, nah, but they are they are going down now. Um, but it was it was wild as hell for a while. What you said you what kind of bike do you have? Uh right now a 2009 R eight modified to race. I just threw lights on it to be legal between That's you and me. That's pretty badass. Like the stock R six, um, good bike, but honestly, fucking sluggish when it comes to the engine breaking into a turn. It just feels like rock shit. But once you refine it, you flash the ECU, you put a new exhaust on it, you change around the brake lines, et cetera, et cetera, air filter, blah, blah, blah. All this other bullshit. I can't even remember half the crap I've done to it because I've had it since I was young. Oh, I think my fucking phone died. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. It's just basically a track bike with lights on it. I love the hell out of it. I've changed the suspension. Uh, they're actually expensive now, weirdly enough, because Yamaha discontinued them. So, okay. uh, yeah, you can only buy a track version of it. So used ones are going for like damn near the price of what they went for new back in 2010. It's damn. really wild. That's why I held on to it. It's an absolute monstrous classic. I love it. It's very stiff. Probably because I suck at suspension. That's not my strong suit. That's why I'm looking at the Ducati because it has an electronic suspension. It could change itself around for me. But there's just this certain rugged feel to the bike. And I also like Dunlop tires. Which is stupid, because Dunlop tires sticky, but they have no feel. So, yeah. a lot of guys complained about that. Like, oh, I hate the Dunlops. You can't feel anything. I'm like, I'm fine with it. They're like, you got to have faith in the bike and what you're doing. I'm like, yeah, sure. If I crash, I die. Who gives a shit? So, for me, it's always about being on the edge with the bike. There's just, I just believe in it for some reason. It's just this insane feeling that I feel connected to the machine, that I can do whatever I want with it and not really pay a price. As long as you have no fear with the bike, I think it's just, it's undescribable. It's very much living in the moment. I like to call it something that we rarely do as human beings live in this exact moment where everything we do, we're thinking about something else or somewhere else, unless you're in flow, like on the racetrack, which you already know when you're just pounding in those turns, you're making your entry apex and exit. And then you just sort of hit this euphoric state where it's kind of like the bike now feels effortless. And then you're thinking, I wonder what I'll have for lunch today. Hey, that guy's on a fucking Ducati, Penigale, and I'm passing him in an R6. He's slow, you know, those sort of things until you crash. And then it's also kind of like that where you're thinking, I'm crashing. This yeah. isn't very good. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had a real bad one last year. It was wild. Um, no, it was, uh, yeah, you just, I just, I like go to another place when I'm like, when the green flag drops. It's just, I'm just in somewhere else and I'm just, it's all goes by so fast. And it's, it's weird because I'll be like hyper depressed. It'll be one of those weird episodes, you know, where I'm like just real stressed out, a lot of anxiety, just, just not feeling good. And then I get to the racetrack and I get in the seat and that shit's gone. Well, as soon as I'm like in the throttle, it's gone. And I'll think about it again until like I get back home. I'm like, oh fuck, life sucks. <laughs> just you know, I home. never really had that. Like, I think the worst I've ever done on a track is when I was chasing someone, because then I was so focused on like that carrot thing, like trying to figure out how the fuck oh, yeah. is this guy faster than me? How? Yeah. The worst is when you go up against really good racers. The absolute most demoralizing thing is when there's a guy who I think it was, he was the Northwestern champion. What the fuck was that guy's name? I used to know it like the back of my hand because of the way he humiliated me on turn one. <laughs> like... I'm going to the turn one. There's a whole bunch of us. And I'm tipping in. And I'm like, there's no way anyone could pass me. I'm on the inside line. No one can pass me here. We're on street bikes. We can't achieve 60 degrees of radius. That's only MotoGP. Someone would have to be superhuman to get past me here. Because I was a little wide on the line. And then this dude. His name was Ricky. Something like that. He comes in on his R6. And he's so far down on the ground. His elbows are dragging. And my mind was absolutely warped. Like, and then he just peels off and he just destroyed me. And all I could think is, how did he do it? 
how did he not eat shit on the same bike? It made no sense. And I'm like, accident about it. I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? Afterwards, they're like, oh, yeah, that's Ricky, blah, blah, blah. He's the grand champion of the Northwestern WERA. And I'm like, well, there's no shame in being beaten by the champion, I guess. Yeah. I, that's I, more fun than YouTube. I've been there. I've been th <laughs> yeah, dude, no. Every, I shit you not. Every time I get in a race car, and the same shit happened at Daytona. I got in a race car going around Daytona at night because it rained all day. So they let us run at night, like 8, 8 p.m. It's so under the lights of Daytona, like the dream, the fucking dream. And I'm out there running. And every time I do that and I get in the car and I get out of the car and I'm still like hopped, I'm like, I don't want to do YouTube ever again. <laughs> this is all I want to do. But yeah, you, you can't. Like, I, I can't because like the, the only reason I'm able to kind of make my way is because of so much support on YouTube. But it's just an in the moment thing. I love doing YouTube. But like when you get in, when you're in those moments, I'm like, <sighs> but that's the thing is Frank Kimmel raced in my series the first year and a little bit in the second year. He's a 10 time ARCA champion, like NASCAR ARCA series. This dude, it, you just don't like they're he's like in the middle of the corner and the car's sideways. And these are asphalt cars. These aren't dirt cars. He's sideways, coming off the corner, sideways under throttle, under torque. Drifting. Just gone. It's like, well, it's not even drifting. It's the car's like flexed. It's like he's giving it so much hell that it's like breaking the law of fucking physics. And this dude laps me within like four laps of starting the race. And I'm like, how is this possible? It's just craziest shit I've ever experienced. And then after two years, now I'm right up there with these guys. I've like, learned how to be on the absolute edge. Like, you got to learn how to be on that little edge right there, which I learned at Dominion Raceway, and I spun. It's the here. difference between crashing and making the turn. Yeah, it's that little that little edge. And I spun. My, my tires were cold at Dominion last year, and I spun. Car hit Cold me. tires in the dirty part of the track, your worst oh, enemy. I was, I was, I spun. Caught it, didn't hit nothing. I was like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was like lots out. <laughs> Somebody hit me going full kilt. My car flew in the air, almost did a front flip. And these are 3,000 pound stock cars. It was the craziest shit. Um, I thought I was going to get lit up, but it was just a racing incident. This is one of those things, but that was the worst wreck I've ever had by a mile. Just lost it. But and at I least you're in a cage. You know, you're less likely to get fucked up. All I had was like my ribs hurt real bad the next day. That was it. Because the, the seat comes around your chest and like holds you right here. You like have to sit sideways to get into the seat. It has these chest or these like rib holders. And then the head comes around here and you have a neck brace on that's connected. Yeah, we have head. none of that. Yeah, you literally, you, fly. you just, fly. you just get <laughs> like a chest protector, a back protector. And if you can afford it, the $4,000 leather race suit that has an airbag in it. And even then, it's not guaranteed to stop your collarbone from snapping like a twig. Yeah, I've seen videos of people go off the front of their bike and then they land and they're just sliding across the racing surface and they're pissed. So they're like like flipping off the guy that they feel wronged them as they slide at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Dude's just like, what the fuck? As he's sliding on the track. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy, man. I think the most fun you can have on a vehicle is a motorcycle on a racetrack and uh, drifting it. It's probably one of the most skillful things ever. And I'm not saying I'm a master of it by no means. The only thing I could say I've mastered unequivocally on a motorcycle is twisting the throttle and jamming that brake so hard that I'm doing a stoppy into a turn, which can save your life. It's a, a trick you should pick up if you ride motorcycles on the street, by the way. Like doing a stoppy? Oh, yeah. Stoppies can save your life if you know how to do them. Yeah. It, I, that's uh, another one of those ragged edge things. You get just enough, you can stop yourself from crashing into someone's car. You get yeah. too much, you throw yourself through their black back window. Yeah, I um I remember one time traffic just stopped over this bridge that you couldn't see over. And I came over this, I was in my katana. Uh, on my katana. And Blind I remember turns. Yeah, the spice it was, of life. Dude, it was terrifying. And all I see is brake lots. And I jammed the rear brake and the front brake at the same time. Just probably a smarter up. move. And I just the the bike is just ice. It's just I'm on ice, but I'm staying up. And I'm on ice, and like the, the 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 rear end would kick out, and the front end, front end would kick in, like, and, it, and I stopped like a foot away from the car, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> didn't I didn't wreck? Except I did wreck eventually because I was the weirdest shit. I was just driving on back roads, just having a good old time, driving my katana, and I went to corner, and there was just a little tiny bit of gravel on the inside of the like road, and I touched it, and it was immediately I was on the ground, slide. <laughs> Yeah, I had to quit riding on the street because of stuff like that. Uh, cheeseburger. My whole body, my right side of my body was just cheeseburger. Yeah, that's why I wear a full suit. 
Yeah, I, I had think the last time. <laughs> so you need more than jacket, dude. No, uh, my pants had to be cut off me. My ex-wife cut my pants off of me. Let's yeah, see. that's it's not the way to go. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. fine though, huh? That was great. Yeah, I built another biker immediately after because <laughs> I wrecked the hell out of that one. Let me hit these super chats and then we'll wind it down today. I appreciate you guys so much. We only got a few of these to cover real quick. Um, already read dead, Fred. Kid Flash says, can you make a video on steps to be become a NASCAR driver? Um, I don't know. I could I can talk about it on a stream, uh, maybe after my first race, so it'll be official because I'm so close to being able to be like, yeah, I'm like I'm an NASCAR, I'm an actual NASCAR driver. I just have to race this race on the 17th at Daytona, and then I'm like technically for real. I'm, I'll I'm never make it to MotoGP, but he made it to NASCAR. Some dreams come true. Some dreams come true. You just gotta have a really redneck accent. Thank you, Kid Flash. Um, Rob, we got his. Cecil says, oh, my boy Cecil says, everyone has a price minus six hundred dollars. Well, I know that Cecil. Yours is like a like a, a Jack and Coke. I've been I've been to clubs with Cecil. Um, thank you, Cecil. June Bug, the absolute legend. <laughs> he's a, he's such a great man. Um, oh my God, it's the gun. I'm finally here. What a debut. Thank you, June Bug. Xander says, uh, what program you use and make your uh, VTube model? Hold on, let me look. <laughs> You're actually the worst VTuber in human history. This is the uh, unofficial one. We're not done with it. Uh, what the fuck program am I using? It's V something. VTube Studio is what I'm using. And I had a custom made bit from Romanian Chan. A Roman Chan. Ah, shit. I forgot her name. She's working on a very dirty porn video game. Keep an eye out for it. Nice. That's like my friend. Uh, she's a VTuber. What's uh, uh, Cottontail VA? I've had her on my show before and she's always doing porn voice acting and it's the greatest shit. She has a beautiful, her voice is literally made for that. It is made for being like porn, like hundred percent hentai Jesus Christ. Every time she talks, I'm like my balls shake. I'm like, how do you do that? It's like speaking to me. Um, Lord Pepsi. So proud of American English, be it Yankee or Southern. I agree with that. Thank you, my friend. Um, Xander says, uh, what's your top favorite Gundams going to see seed movie? Go. Oh, I'm not going to see the Seed Moody. I've never been a Seed fan. I should watch it, though, to be fair. I just never found time for it. Uh, favorite Gundam of all time, probably New Gundam, High New Gundam, Sasabi, Kisatria. I could go off all day, but we got Super Chats. <laughs> Thank you, Xander. Slagless says, here's two for the Goomba. Love you, Gundam. Thank you, Slagless. Appreciate you. Hey, yo. Uh, <coughs> my boy. Adrian Rabello says, boss, man. <clears throat> this is one of my editors. Says, uh, this is Mexican man sending this shamelessly to tell Gunnam that if he needs a clipper for his new streams, I'm dirt cheap. He is dirt cheap. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to get in touch with my producer, Pascatore, on Twitter. Make sure he gets that information. Oh, I'll get it from. We're, we're talking in DMs on Twitter. I'll just get it from you. There you go. Yeah, he's a good, dude. He'll send you 100 clips immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, God bless those working Mexicans. Yeah. He also mows my lawn. No, not really. But he should. Uh, Yo Yer says, "Love the videos. Do you know the white Bowser? The white Bowser is a predator." Okay. My assistant, she uh, actually exposed me to white Bowser literally a week ago, and he talks like this. I'm not a poet at all. Oh, it sounds like a predator. <laughs> I have to send it to you because it's 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 low cow insanity bullshit, but it's not as big as like Dark Side Phil or Christian. Jesus, Yo Yer, thank you, my friend, Billy Hatcher. Next time you come to Montserrat in Houston, I want to take you to a place called Cook Shack. They have really good spicy chicken. Sounds great to me. I'll be in Montserrat, I'm sure, at some point this year when Montserrat happens. Uh, they usually invite me out. So thank you, Billy. Love you. Slosher. Gundam is right about these people wanting to control how we think. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari is a WEF social engineer who said he thinks people are hackable. Thank you, Slosher. I agree That's with depressing. that. depressing. It is. It is very depressing. Um uh, I, I'm pretty sure I got your pink boy, Karis, but I'm gonna pull it up anyway. Love you, Karis. Yeah, hope. Yeah, we did that one. Mo says, says, hell, Papa Gundam. Uh, when does your live stream air? I just came off my live stream to this one. How dare you miss it? <laughs> he was really late. Uh, what did there? I'm guessing they're Wednesday. Do you do them every Wednesday? Uh, I guess we're doing every Wednesday now. I'm gonna do my best to make it. I'm trying not to uh, screw up my sleep schedule from editing all night. There's some times where I do these uh, 12 to 20 hour marathons to meet a lot of demands between my agency and brands I work for. My life has no meaning. I'd rather be in a NASCAR. 
Same. Thank you, Mo. I appreciate you. Dead Fred, talking about gear and women. Look up this girl named Brooke Havoc. Havoc. She's an amateur wrestler, and she's definitely on gear. <laughs> I'm uh, looking up now. Yeah, that's what I was going to Brooke have lock havoc havoc okay i found her she's called the emo queen on twitter the emo queen i'm sending oh. it to you now yeah 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 she's she's no nascar for him she look she you know i'm gonna be honest she doesn't really look like she's on gear her shoulder she has a little shoulder bloat but i've seen girls with real good genetics get this build she kind of looks like a small girl to me um she could be on like a very, very low, do low dose Anavar, maybe. Um, but I have girls I train that are on nothing that can get that upper body looking kind of like that. Um, thank you, Dad. Appreciate you. Love you. Mr. VNM1 says, say that to Gina and Rhonda. I don't know who Gina and Rhonda is. You know, I'm a Carano. Mr. VNM. Mr. VNM. Uh, Pink Boys. Pink Boys. Got him. Got him. Charles, got him. Shadow Goff says, funny you mentioned Japan. A J Japanese uh, news network was making fun of foreigners that moved to Japan and want uh, to change to fit their narrative. Oh, what yeah. You? That's actually a very old video from about a couple months to a year back, but it's making the rounds again on Twitter. Oh, no. So what is it? The Japanese people? Oh, the um, Japanese don't fuck around. That's just all there is to it. So when it comes to this sort of um, foreigners are at a disadvantage because they don't speak Nihojin. And it's kind of like, well, too fucking bad. Learn Japanese, asshole. You know, it's, it's not going to kill you to go, uh, Watashi wa is a Gundam. This, you know? Yeah. Pick up the language. You can, you can learn a lot of phrases and a lot of stuff really fast. Yeah. If you um, don't understand what the hell they're saying, you could say, uh, Surimasen yukuri onegaishimasu. No, wait, that's, uh, could you please repeat that one more time? So it was, uh, uh, Surimasen igirisu. Uh, God damn it. My Japanese is failing me right now. It'll come to me when I'm off the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shadow Goff. Moichido onegaishimasu. Cyphrones. Thank you, my friend. Welcome back. Welcome back. Josh, uh, regarding leaving blue states, I hear you. I want to leave the San Francisco Bay. The politics are awful, but these tech companies pay me too much to money to leave. I cry at not sitting at my golden toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Um. Now, I have a friend that just moved from California. I think from San Diego, maybe. And she was making an ass ton as at like working as, as a manager for like a retail company. And she transferred to Alabama. No shit. Like in the same city I'm in, she transferred to Alabama and they, she convinced them to give her a, a small raise. So she's in Alabama now making slightly more than she was making in California. So I think that the opportunity is there. You just have to have a reasonable company. Um, newer Tundra, Gundams have rust issues. Be careful. Their frames are made of cheap materials. I know this because I work for Toyota. Dead Fred Head said. Uh, I've got like, a, yeah, I guess it is a newer Tundra, like the 2020 model. So that's fairly recent. Thank you, Dead Fred Head. Um, Dan Tassic says, when you go into on PC, oh, Pop Culture Crisis, March 1st. I fly there like a day, the day before, March 1st. Um, West Virginia, Mount Mama. That Dan Zix says, dang it, wouldn't let me gift new memberships. I turned off Adblock, and we'll see if it goes there. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, there was something where Adblock is, like, slowing down YouTube or something. And I did notice, like, my when I would watch videos, it was, like, sluggish. Nothing would load. I've like, never really used Adblock on YouTube throughout my whole time of uh, doing, uh, using YouTube. I always felt like uh, me watching a few shitty ads was enough for the people I like watching. Yeah. So it was, like, a sacrifice of sorts. That makes sense. That's why all my friends, when I do live streams and I use my browser, like, you don't have ad block, you fucking idiot. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's completely fine. I, I just never turned mine off. I just I just downloaded it one day because it was there. And then I just never turned it off. And it's been years. Um, thank you, Street. But unless the porn, like I'm watching, ask me to turn it off, then I will. You have to <laughs> put the ad block on the pornography or else the Russians will get your information. It's like, please disable your ad block. I'm like, oh, no. I might have to do this. She's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> Street bike guy says, what gun, What bike do you ride? It's an R6, right? I'm going to get a Ducati Pentagale, I think, this summer. I, I think I'm going to get to pull the trigger and grab one. I might as well have one before I drop dead. Damn. Um, that's like me. I wanted to get a supercar before I died. And I will eventually might sell it. Yeah, Just get it while you, you can enjoy it before you get too old. You don't want to end up like the dude's... Fucking old as dirt on a fucking Pentagale looking like a fool and he has a dog on his back. 
And I'm sitting there like, bro, you got a V4R. You don't ride this on the street as a street car unless you're retarded. It's literally a homologated race bike. Forgive me. <laughs> Hayden says having a 23 Tundra means having a subscription service to a truck. 90% of the features my brand new truck has means I have to use Toyota app and subscribe. I can oh, start, fuck the only app. pay for it. Jesus. Bro, you don't have to like, do they still have the like loophole in the uh, keychain where you have to press the lock button three times, but hold it down the third time to get the remote start on? That's how you get around it. But I don't know if they like phased it out for the 23s. I uh, fuck the newer ones. Nothing personal. I think they look cool, but they got rid of the V8 engine and you can suck my dick with all this uh, save the environment. Here's another hot take. Fuck the environment. I don't give a shit about the birds, the bees and the trees. I'm going to be dead one day. <laughs> Agreed. I'm a V8 guy all day. Yeah, once you get uh, once you're in a vehicle that just really slams, there's no going back. Yeah, there's no when you have that torque. My R8's V8. Like, oh, obviously. It, yeah, but and then I I had a five O Mustang that I got rid of right before, and I've had every race car I've ever. They all have V8s, obviously. All the race cars do, and uh, yeah, everything have to have a V8. Now, granted, uh, my truck, my six point seven Cummins is a it's an inline six which kind of sucks, but it's, uh, it's, you know, the cylinder is like this freaking big. So I guess it's, you know, it's like a tractor <laughs> with big diesel motors. Um, thank you, Hayden. Love you. Appreciate you. God uh, bless you, sir. Charles, I had to replace my alternator. Forgot to unplug my battery. The positive wire touched the engine and burn out and burn out. God damn. So I bought a wire and wired the alternator directly to the battery. Such a pain. <sighs> Sad. Absolutely. Modern times call for modern solutions. Street bike guy. I had a water pump bolt snap in half and timing cover. Had to get the bolt biter to get it out and retap the threads. Was a nightmare. Yep. Retap, and that's what you do, man. When you break a freaking bolt off, you got to retap that bullshit. It's terrible. Street bike guy. Appreciate you. Renee Villarreal <laughs> says the buildings is Lego engines and PCs are just more expensive than plastic ones, like both y'all's channels. I don't even know what that means, Renee. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Know. Thank you for the body. I don't even know what that means, Renee. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for always being here, Renee. You're great. You're the goat. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, the street by guy, not a bolt biter. Had to drill out the bolt. I'm drunk as fuck. Oh, I wish that was me. I ran out of I had I ran out of rum. I had two balls of rum and I'm out. And I can't leave because it's snowed in. God. I love me. I love Woodford. I ran out of Woodford and then I ran out of freaking I ran out of everything. I'm just out of everything. Don't even have monsters. God, my white monster, my beautiful monster. Ain't got nothing. Thank you, Street Bike. Fathom. FYI, most Japanese uh, visual novel games are hentai porn games. Hopefully, Gundam is reoccurring. Thank you, Fathom. I appreciate you. We made it uh, 140 likes from goal. Make sure you spam that like button right now. Spam the hell out of it while I'm sitting here. Do it. Don't be a bitch. Um, we will blow bubbles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Out of my asshole. Um, Charles, what bike do you recommend for a beginner? Uh -huh. Ninja, Ninja 250. <laughs> that is technically what everybody says you should do. Yeah. Unless you're an absolute natural talent like I was. I went with a 600. No, the R6 was my first bike. I wanted to race motorcycles too, but um, my family, uh, I think my thing died. But my family was completely against it. So they wanted me to be a fucking man of God, as they said. But I knew when I was like three, I wanted to race. And I remember the first day I was going to like classes for motorcycle school and they let me get on a fucking sports bike. Thank God they had a Ninja because I hate fucking cruisers with a passion. I'd rather walk than ride a cruiser. Yeah. But anyway, they, they go, uh, take this turn. And I go, how fast do you want me to take the turn? And he goes, as fast as you think you can make it. And I smile. I go, okay. So I bang that fucking 250 through the turn. Sparks are flying because it still has the safety pegs on it. But I lost the rear a little bit coming out. And my teacher goes, that may have been the single best turn I've ever seen in my life if you didn't lose the rear on the exit. And everybody else starts going in. And the other teacher's like, wow, you must really be riding all the time in the mountains and hitting the twists, huh? With the fast guys. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I, I do that all the time. I didn't tell them that that was the first day I was on a motorcycle ever. Because I knew if I did, they probably wouldn't let me keep having fun. The moral of the story is nothing. No, it's <laughs> my first bike was that freaking katana. And I built it because it was destroyed. I bought it for like 600 bucks and I got new fairings for it. Uh, went through the engine, 
went through everything, had that big freaking giant like four cylinder engine that just sits in the middle of the box. So the center of gravity was a nightmare. Um, but uh, that was my first bike was a 600. And it was a monster, just gone. But it weighed like a thousand pounds or well, shit more than that. It felt like uh, it was a great. It was a good bike, although um, I wrecked the hell out of it. Heaviest ball sack. Yeah, and then I had a Ninja, Ninja 600. I forget what it those was are called. pretty good. This was a long time ago. It was it it they, it it's it's back when ninjas looked weird. They like they, for a They're long boxing. time. They, yeah, for a long time they kept that weird, almost retro bike look. Like they almost looked like a weird like dirt bike kind of thing. Yeah. Um, before the new 250, where they looked like a freaking cross rock at a sports bike immediately. Well, um, they knew that they had to really get people interested in them. Yeah. And uh, they hold great value. Like you get a 250, you learn on it, you can resell it. But frankly. You don't even have to start at 250. They have 350s now. They have 450s. The options to get into motorcycles now is bigger than ever. And the best part with the learner bikes is you you really um, can flip them easy to get your cash back. So I probably recommend like one of the newer Yamaha 400s or Ninja 450. You'll have more kick, more bang for your buck, more fun. You could also track it. They also offer the Ninja 450 with a sort of more beefy suspension and chain. So you can have like, rather than buying like the normal one and you have to sort of add all this stuff to make it more rideable out of the gate, it's like that. So that's an option. But if you know that you're remotely responsible, remotely competent, and you believe in yourself, you can grab a 600 if you want. But if you're borderline retarded, remember you can't sue me if you crash and kill yourself. Yeah, because uh, that 600 will be the... If you get a 600 as your first bike, it is, there's a very high chance it'll be the fastest thing you've ever been on, and easily. Without a shadow of a doubt. Easily. <laughs> so, And we, it will kill you if you give it the chance. Yeah. God, I, I'll never forget the first time I gave it the beans. Uh, I forget what they... There's a phrase for it that Travis Pastrana says, and it's hilarious. But I, the torque pulled me back, and it made... Like, like I had to hold on, and it made me just... A whole even more throttle, like full and i'm just like getting pulled as the throttle and i can't let go of the throttle <laughs> because i'm just getting pulled back nobody Stay. taught you to grip the tank with your legs yeah no i was it was just, it was the first i dude i bought the thing had like no fairings on it 600 bucks started it and drove it home and it was just a freaking engine with like the front little thing the front spoke thing with the wheel like the front suspension whatever it, it there's no body on it it was just a seat and like the the little bars and you can see the engine and uh yeah i drove that bitch home and i i gave it gave it the beans and i was just going down this big wide open long road so at least there was that um but yeah i think back and that it scares me i should have died on that thing <laughs> but i did not thank god one of my my buddies that used to come in GameStop all the time had a hayabusa Oh, the Hayabusa. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Black guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, black guys love Hayabusa. Why do you know this? Anyways, yeah, he's I'm a motorcyclist. <laughs> yeah, he died. Um, on the he, Busa, huh? On the Busa. He was, yeah, that's um, pretty common. He's going down 411 back in uh, where I used to live. And he was going like 140, and he hit a like a uh, an 18 wheeler. Yep. The back of it, and just like just turned into mist. Yeah, exactly. Freaking terrifying. And I was like, I remember his brother came into the store. He's like, yep. Uh, so-and-so died. And I was like, what? What? Yeah. And he, and I, and I, he, we always would look at his freaking, his, his boosie. Every time he'd come by, he'd show us his boosie. We loved it. It was cool. Very long. He had like that drag set up. The boosie, like, honest to God. It's like, it's just, I hate boosies. I do. I have family members that own boosies. So don't get too pissed at me. But I find them as kind of shitty bikes. Yeah. Like, they're only good for dragging. And most of the guys who have boosts and that drag them, like the, the fucking swing arm extension, eight times out of ten, they don't know how to handle the power. And, it, like, I got a family member. I got an uncle. Always on with his fucking boosts. He's like, you want to race me? And I'm like, you want to race on a racetrack? I'll do it all fucking day. But if you want to go to a straight line, we already know how this is going to go. And it's fucking boring to go in a straight line. I want to see if you can do 140 and then into a turn and knock it down to 60 and make the turn without turning your ass into a fucking grade. And he's like, I'm too old for that shit. That's why I go into straight line. And it's then that's pretty the much dragon. the end of the conversation. Always the dragon. It's so funny, though, how you said it, you're like black dude, right? I'm like, how do, yeah. And now that I think about it, 
you could name off a whole bunch of motorcycles and I could probably describe the person if you tell me how they live and ride. <laughs> it's just funny. It's like uh it's like the Busa is like the Dodge Charger of like bikes. <laughs> the Busa, the GSXR 1000 RR, that's another one. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Oh man. Um uh Hayden, uh they stopped on 23, no remote start on the fob, only on the app. I don't use it F them. Um, um Damn, the bitches. Them bitches, Hayden. Dude, I gotta take mine in to get stupid uh tire PSI gauge shits on mine. It's the biggest fucking crock. That's crazy. That's outrageous. Master Lions, five gifted memberships. Thank you, my friend. I love you. I appreciate you. And a big, fat, hot, juicy red boy. From Sonya. Milk. From Sonya. We got the fat milk. Thank you so much. Says I was. I wish there was an exception to, to make this red boy orange. I love my orange, but I love you more, Cody. Thank you. Um, this has been very entertaining. Finally got going. I'm hell yeah. No, uh, it was funny. We were playing like this. We this this funny goofy like a uh, Twitter tag for months. <laughs> was, but you were playing it, and I I would catch wind of it once in a blue moon with someone else would let me now. Yeah, and then and I'm just, sitting there like I'm just editing something. What do you, you you said something about like I don't remember. You commented something that was hilarious. I can't remember. I sure one. as fuck can't remember half the things I say. <laughs> it was like something about you just wanted to die. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> You're like, I just want to die. I can't do this. Because odds are I was uh, doing nothing but days on end of editing over and over and over again. The minimum is 10 hours straight. Damn. And then trying to make all of my deadlines and make brands happy. The shit just eats your life away. And then the people are like, come on my show. And you're one of them. And I'm sitting there like, I haven't slept in two fucking days. <laughs> Just do it. It's fine. YouTube's easy, right? Oh, thank you, Sonia. I appreciate you. Mash Lions, Pink Boy. Congratulations to Daytona. Hi, everyone in chat. Thank you, Mash Lions. We did it. I'll see you in Daytona if you live in Florida. Don't forget. Don't forget. Every Red Boy from now until the week before will be on the back of the car on the trunk at Daytona. Thank you, Mash Lions. appreciate you so much, my friend. Uh, last two super chats. Golem says, "Papa Gundam, are you finishing the song played on FNT a while back? The world is ending, and I want to hear it on my way out." Uh, I was trying to play it on my stream before coming here. Then everything just went absolutely wrong. Story moment. So <laughs> it'll probably happen next time. I don't know. I'll play like a originally cut version that we didn't go with because I had a feeling YouTube would see it as bigoted because they're too stupid to realize that I'm of native descent. And I was making a political statement. So I'll play it on a stream and see what the hell happens. Yeah. Usually streams are kind of safe because uh, streams you can, you, they're, you're way more lenient on a stream. Way more lenient on a stream. I've said the most fucked up shit and they still gave me the green dollar sign. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it's, I think if the rule is two hours in, if you're two hours in, YouTube doesn't even look past that point. Apparently that's what I've heard. Um, but yeah, I've said some fucked up shit. And I'm like, well, that's going to be yellow. I've, I, I had like, I don't even remember uh, some controversial person on my show, maybe Alex Stein. And we were just talking some crazy shit. And I did, I got the green. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe this one. If Nick Ricade is on, I get the automatic yellow every time. If his name is in the, my, my title, I get the automatic yellow. Yeah. yeah. That's happened to me a couple of times in nerd rock streams. Yep. And uh, what, when I do the appeal though, it always goes green every time. So at least there's that Hayden started with the Oh nine Yamaha two fifty YZ bought two of them. Then had an 89 Honda Magna. Then went to the 2015 Suzuki Boulevard M90. Um, then the, what is that, 10 9 R2 I A going to be my next step? I'm going to look it up. 1092. Oh. Is that a Ducati? All of these have crazy names. 1092. I pulled up a key, like a padlock key. From You're going to have to give us a base name for that model. <laughs> Because I know a 1098, but a 109 R2, could that be like a KTM race bike I don't know about? I know they just launched some Sounds very like exclusive bike. <laughs> oh, it looks like a like a cruiser sport, like a sport bike on a cruiser had a baby. Mm. So if I can't put it bar. on its side, I'm not that interested to be real. Yeah, you can't put this one on the side. The freaking exhaust is huge. <laughs> the exhaust is too fat. Thank you, Hayden. I appreciate you, my friend. I love you. You're the GOAT. Make sure you like the stream. We're 70 away from the 1,000 like goal. We had 2,000 people in here, the majority of the stream. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much, Gundam. 
I know I hassled you for six months at least. Um, we well, this is the off season. I only have two more major obligations this month, and then I'm free to hate my life. Good. Good. I'm going to build tiny robots and then think about my motorcycle as I stare at the snow outside. Yeah, that's me with my R8. I'm frozen in, and I was daily driving it for so long, and now I can't even. I went down in the garage, and I just looked at it today. <laughs> but you're in Bama. You could, like, drive yours whenever you feel damn near. Yeah. Almost, except for that one, three to four days a year where it just snows like a motherfucker. And like, I'll my go. bike, I can't ride unless it's at the optimum temperatures. So we're talking the very end of May, June to possibly early September at best. But the second it drops below 60 degrees, I'm taking my life into my own hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Real quick. Tiny story. I bought a, uh, a V-Star as a cruiser because I wanted to try a cruiser. I bought a V-Star 650 or something. Heard and the name. Yeah, I think it was a Honda. V-Star? I don't know. Anyways. Anyways, so I bought a V-Star, like 650. Really beautiful cruiser. And uh, I drove it like an hour and a half home. The thing is, I bought it in like January. And it was like 30 degrees outside. And I had two pairs of gloves and thermals on. And I still had to stop every 10 minutes and get my friend's car. And like get in the heater for like 30 minutes. I thought I was going to die that day. Yeah, that is. Okay, here's my story. I was making sure my mother and sister didn't go homeless. And I was working at a warehouse about 30 to 40 minutes away from me. I obviously couldn't drive my Mustang anymore because I think my mother crashed it. And the snow was going on. And the other car had a starter issue. But it's a fucking Honda. And sometimes Honda does dick as shit. Like putting the starter under the fucking car. Oh, God. So (laughs) I had to borrow a family member's aprilia scooter and ride through the snow on the highway on that thing so it would be 10 degrees and i would freeze my fucking ass off on that machine Uh, like my hands hurt and there was no uh, stopping for me oh my gosh the hands man the hands i went last night i walked my dogs because it's snowy and i have a husky and i have a german shepherd i might they'll probably want to walk in the snow so i walk around my neighborhood and i get around it's like freaking quarter of a mile man (laughs) <laughs> it's like to go around my big cul-de-sac like it's not a cul-de-sac but it's like a circle it leads back to the road and i got back i had two pairs of gloves on get back to my house my i had i, I had to run my hands under warm water i thought i was gonna pass out i can't it now granted it was five degrees last night five degrees yeah okay then that makes yeah. sense no gloves no i had two pairs of gloves they were just sucky ass gloves they were like the kind you can just see through and shit that's kind of odd because i've uh been in new york snow when it's like five degrees shoveling when my snowblower breaks down and I can't fix it. And then I had to edit a YouTube video on top of it. So I'd wake up at noon, finish the snow around 5 or 6 p.m. Or was it that I edited, then went outside at 5 p.m. and started shoveling. Cold as a motherfucker. But long as you're moving, it ain't too bad. But I guess I've gotten so used to this garbage that maybe I built up a retarded tolerance. That's what I was going to say. You're just used to it. I'm not. Dude, it is 70 degrees, nine, ten months out of the year. And, that doesn't even seem logical to me. It sounds like a fairy tale made up by the Jewish conspirators and the Zionist <laughs> movement. <laughs> Thank God it's past uh, two hours. No, um, I, I no, my pool, I, I, my pool, I, I can use my pool from April all the way to November, and then yeah, and, and that, it's my pool in my backyard. I have an in-ground pool like on my back deck area, and it is solid rock, frozen right now, <laughs> just completely. I saw my dog running on it earlier, like a dumbass. So well, yeah. I got a hole in my back driveway. That's what a water collects and the little birds bathe in it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hayden says it's a Suzuki Boulevard M109 R2 Cruiser Sport Baby. Yeah, got some shit and get. Thank you. I appreciate okay, that's that. I know nothing about cruisers. It looks pretty cool to be honest. It does look really cool. Um, Wolf Spain says, Hey Gunnam, can you talk about how your mom was blind herself after you worked on her car? Also, congrats, Cody, on getting there. Oh, god damn it. Why would you remind me of that dumb shit? <laughs> I oh. guess I could tell it one more stupid time. Uh there's my sister's car. It, it it broke down. It I don't know how the hell she did it, but the radiator had all these holes in it. And it's a fucking Honda. It's not like it races, it's not like it does anything. And I'm sitting there wondering how you get holes in it. So I call around for some shops. Because obviously I'm a YouTuber now. I don't have time to be wrenching on cars. 
And all the shops around town are like, oh, yeah, to put a new radiator in it, uh, it's going to be $800. And, of course, my mother goes, I don't have that kind of money. I'm like, nobody has any fucking kind of money. There's no money until they go into my pockets. And I wasn't in the mood to pay $800 for a car that I think I've spent probably $5,000 on in the last seven years. And the car, if you bought one off Craigslist, is probably two grand as far as value goes. So I said, fuck it, I'll handle it myself. I bought a cheap Chinese radiator and I blew half my day putting it in this fucking car, this godforsaken thing that if I ever get the chance, I'd shoot it. But I'm sure if I shot my car, the New York City police would be all over my dick and taking me away. And as soon as I finished, I don't know why my mother interjects her stuff and has stuff into stuff, even when she doesn't know. But I think it's like an old lady thing. Old women have to be in charge at all times. <laughs> yeah. Even when they don't know what the hell's going on. So after I finish and she stands around and says, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that. And I'm like, well, maybe you could help. I finally get it going. I pour the radiator in it, turn on the car, let it run for 30 minutes. There's no leaking. Nothing's going wrong. And I think, thank you, Jesus. For the first time in a long time, you gave me one. There's no problem here. And I can go back to making cringe videos about TikTok thoughts or Twitch thoughts. I turn around and I tell my mother, I say, don't touch that radiator. And she goes, you need to open the radiator top to let air in. And I said, do not open the radiator. The car has just been on. If you open it, you're going to you're gonna spray yourself with radiator. And if it gets in your fucking eyes, you're going to go blind. I turn around, I take maybe three steps, three to five. And then I just hear this spraying and water pouring all over the place. And wow. I turn around and she actually took the top off. She ignored everything I fucking <laughs> said. And then she goes, it sprayed out. Yeah. And I said, of course it fucking would. And then I said, if you went fucking blind, I wouldn't take care of you. And you know, my <laughs> sister put you in a home in a heartbeat. So you got lucky as shit that you didn't go blind today. And it was one of the worst days of my life because I'm trapped around these people and they, they're, they're like, they're, they're, they're not, they're not emotional vampires. That's an ex-girlfriend. Family are financial and mental vampires. You're so lucky you're, for, you're away from your family. I can tell just by yeah. looking at your house in the background. Yeah, I don't, uh, I have mom and dad and they live hours away and that's the only family I have. <laughs> yeah, if I move hours away from my family, I think they'd die. <laughs> like I took my dog to the vet like on Friday and to get her medication, it was $640. Don't worry. Bidenomics is working. <laughs> I, and then like three or four days later, my mother starts messaging me. I see what's up. She talks to me like your sister's cat doesn't have litter. I say, well, that's too bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> then she goes, we need bottled water. I'm like, I get bottled water when I get bottled water. You only dropped off two cases. I know I dropped off two cases. I kept a case for myself. Well, somebody has to go back. Whatever, whatever. I leave, right? And then within an hour of leaving, my phone is going off. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I certainly hope it's that attractive middle-aged chick who looks like Betty Page wanted to touch my penis. <laughs> Instead, it's my mother. And she's like, you know, I could use some money for food. And I'm like, how much? Because I can't afford a lot of things. I'm getting less on my retirement and yada, yada, yada. And I go, how much? And she goes, well, whatever you think is necessary. Just tell me what the fuck you want. It's not that hard. And then she texts back, okay, 300 to $400. And I'm just like, ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. God damn it. Either that or nobody eats but me, you know. I, I don't like where my life is right now, so I got to get out of New York. <laughs> this is what happens behind the scenes, and then people yell at me online. You don't upload enough, you idiot. Shit. I put out one video a week. You, <laughs> where I am. You're tired. so lucky. I'm tired because I have to do so much work. I have to send it to my editor, and then he sends it back. God, it takes forever. <laughs> I'll have to ask you what you pay your editor. It's not that much. He doesn't really ask for much. Wow. I might have to give this guy a job. Now he does. Uh, he does. Um, he runs my other channel completely. He runs all of it. And uh, if he hits like a certain viewership, I'll pay him like a thousand dollar bonus per. And like the first, the first month I set this goal for him, he went nuclear and got like half a million views. Wow. <laughs> was, no. So I had to pay him like two grand. <laughs> I, like, I see you're a great businessman. 
oops <laughs> i didn't think he did but he knocked it out the fucking park so yeah i was like oh well, this one's gonna suck to pay a lot for that one catastrophe can we meet your dogs please I think this is about three dollars usd um catastrophe follow me on twitter um uh, my booking agent and his off. instagram and my instagram yeah and uh, i will post a picture of my dogs when i get off here you get pictures of dogs he has shirtless pics balls he shows his balls everything do you like the smell of man musk they're long <laughs> they're long <Do> you... <laughs> have you ever thought about licking a man's taint this is your guy he's a sexual maven i'm waiting I'm he's waiting. hoping that you are hot and sweaty and ready unbathed Please. unwashed unclothed <laughs> <laughs> uninhibited <laughs> come on baby all you gotta do is show it with tequila and don't wash and i'm golden that's all i need man that's all i need i appreciate you guys so much i love you thank you for all the super chats thank you to everybody that comes from uh gunham's channel which is 99 percent of you appreciate you guys so much make sure you're subscribed if you're not um, because Saturday I have Mint on Camel Thoughts and I have Zia as usual, my co-host. So give her some love. We'll be live Saturday at nine uh central. Don't forget that. And uh yeah, that's it. Anything you want to add, Gunnar, before you leave? I got nothing. Help me get to a million if you want to piss off the system. That's uh the best way to put it. If you are sick and tired of everything on YouTube and you want to make someone who works there mad, fucking follow me. There you go. I'm hope I'm praying and hoping you're not very far off. What you're two two hundred K off? Yeah, believe me, that's a tall order with the way things are going for me right now. Jesus, Jesus. Well, you'll get there. It's just, it's the, after uh, I die. Like the day I get that motorcycle I want, I go on a racetrack in my brand new red leathers and I just fuck up. The suspension has some sort of bug and it flings me into uh, a tree. Then everybody oh. will subscribe to me. <laughs> oh, a sympathy. Yes. Yeah, but it won't matter. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my god, get him to a million. Please, God. Uh, he used to be so funny till he said something I thought was offensive about Lady Pete. It's unsubbed. It's like, bro, is this an airport? Freaking <laughs> I know. Fucking no. I, I'm that, done with you after what you said here. Oh no. And I'm like, oh well. Oh no, Dragon Wolf 191. What will I ever do? Jesus. I guess you didn't like the fact I said kids should be focusing on graham crackers and not gender, and I'm the fuck up. Yeah. It's wild. All right, boys. I love you. You're free to go, Gunnam. You can leave at any time. I'm going to do Naked Snake. Got to take my shirt off. Flex my titties for everybody. Appreciate you guys. I was told I have to see this real quick. How long is it going to take? Two minutes. Two minutes? This is like an intermission where you take off your clothes or something and it's like yeah, videos? Off. That's it. No, I, I just play music. It's live. I All right. Let's stuff. just see this for the lols. Okay. Well, then you All right, my producer said so. And if it's not like incredibly funny, I'm going to be livid with him. It's not going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like master lions my boy can't make the race the tax season's busy but i will uh stream the race in my office for all my clients that day kick ass and be safe yes uh, it'll be on fox sports one uh february 17th make sure you watch me my first arca nascar menards series thank you uh master lions i love you dude appreciate you for another wait let me are you on the list <gasps> that's another red boy on the car master lions i know it's master lions Lions? I say lions because I'm stupid. Thank you, Master. Appreciate you. I love you. You're on the list. You're on the card. Thank you. Josh says, if you uh, get out of New York, Gunnam, you can come live with me. But well, we got to econ econ we got to economic economize. Econ econ oh, my God. What is that word? Holy shit. Alabama. Economize. Economize. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm getting a big house. I'm not even playing. Dude, I'm getting something that says I busted my ass for years on YouTube. So that way, when women come over, they know who I am. I'm the guy. It's like, yeah, it's like when Cecil came to my house and Cecil's like, what the fuck is this place? <laughs> He's like, why is this so big? <laughs> like, because I put Cecil's a from New York. Down. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. He was like, what the fuck? He's like, this would be three million dollars in New York. Yeah. Not in Alabama. Not even. It's not even a third of that now. Man. All right. Let's do Naked Snake for the 262nd stream in a row. We haven't missed Naked Snake in over two and a half years. It's time. Let's do it, boys. How hairy is my chest today? You're about to find out. On the 262nd running of Naked Snake. Thank you guys so much for getting us here. Let's do it. Alan's the first one. Going hard. Going hard. Thank you, Teddy Kong. Appreciate you. Thank you, Alan. 
Here we go. All right, I got to put my headband on. Take my ears off. What a thrill with darkness and All right, monkey band. Here we go. Let's see how long Gundam lasts for this cringe shit. Here we go. 262 times in a row. I appreciate you guys so much. Love you. Here we go. Thank you, Mick Stellar. <laughs> Watch all the viewers drop, Gunner. You ready? <laughs> this explains why I like you get super chats from what appear to be attractive women. They oh, basically yeah. show up and wait for the naked snake bit. He's like Magic Mike. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Look at all these. It's like I'm stripping. Rock the Casbah, baby. You ready for the Dude, burst? put on. Everybody's working for the weekend. Let's go. <laughs> Some lover boy. Catastrophe. Thank you. Here we go. It's time for the jiggle titty moment. Because why? <gasps> I'm still in a dream snake. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. Look at them all joining in. We give my life, not for honor, boys. But for you, what got in trouble? <laughs> Lost controller. Rudy, too. Look at all these boys. <laughs> Look at the avatar. It's beautiful. Hayden. Catastrophe. They're just throwing it down today for the naked snakes. Can you believe it? This is what we call level 70 tier six geared. Grifting. <laughs> what do I think? I'd fire you. That's what I think. Wait, the <laughs> microphone's on. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Sonia, love you. Appreciate you guys so much. Here's the final titty jiggle of the night. 262 in a row. Appreciate you guys. Here we go. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. Fun. We need the rights to Lover Boys. Everybody's working for the weekend. It would flow better. I think there'd be more money. Yeah. That would be great if, uh, you know, how old record studios are. Man, they will like, they'll, come, they'll show up at your house and kill you. Hey, cool. Man, if it wasn't 11 at night, I would have turned to the guitar and just started banging out those riffs. <laughs> oh, everybody's working for, for the, the weekend. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a new romance. Oh, you want a piece of my hot pan -am -pan -am? Yeah, man. My dad, we used to watch NASCAR when I was growing up. Like every, it was like my my life. And if uh, if Gort, my dad was a big Jeff Gordon fan. I was too, obviously. And if he won, my dad would just get drunk and play Lover Boy all night, <laughs> just on these speakers, like this old freaking giant speakers with a big stereo in the middle, just jamming to Lover Boy. Loved it. Thank you, Hayden. I love you. Appreciate you for your gold, boy. Master Lions, five gifted memberships, 27th Ryan, super sticker. I love you. Thank you so much. I love you, little hamster. And then, Wolf Spain, Naked Snake, Colonel. It's Naked Snake, Metal Gear, and all that. Um, Daniel Pace, thank you. We're going to raid Cecil because he's my boy. Give Cecil some love. We're going to uh, do our third raid, and it's going into Cecil's show. Let me see if he's still alive before I say anything. <laughs> yes, he's still alive. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Cool, cool. All right. We're going to raid Cecil. Again, Daniel Pace, thank you. Hi, Gunnam. Thank you, Daniel Pace. I appreciate you. Make sure you guys give get Gunnam to a million subscribers. That's the goal. He generally has great content. That's the important thing. So give him some love, and I uh, appreciate you guys so much. I'll see you over on... Oh, wait. Oh, by the way, Fight Milk, um, I'm snowed in, and I don't have Fight Milk supplies. I don't have milk, I don't have eggs, and I don't have alcohol, and I can't get any delivered to me. Because I'm snowed in. You so, can't even get crow's eggs. Can't get shit. All right. 
So Saturday, we're gonna it'll be locked in for Saturday, and, I, and, it, and it's harder to hit on Saturday. The goal is higher on Saturday, so I'll do it on Saturday uh, for for realsies. So I love you, everybody in the chat saying boo. Hey, you all bitches, I'm snowed in. Y'all are ungrateful sons of bitches. I'm that trapped. fucking upset. I'm trapped. Damn you. Let's Fall get in. some lover boy on Fluffy. Bam, 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 bam. Now I'm thinking of Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> See, that's just, it's not as timeless as everybody's working for the week. It's just a certain energy. The fucking, uh, the bass riff in, uh, what's the, oh God. Um, do 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 it's a lover boy song do 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 i just know everybody's working for the weekend i used to play that while my friends worked and i'd show up to the job with my sports car blasting it yeah waving in the window i've had all i can take i can't take it no more i want to pack my bags and fly my way and no way at all fuck why don't you turn me loose turn me let's see if that's any good Fucking beautiful the bass roll. Boo doo doo doo. Boo doo. God, it's awesome. Fuck, it's awesome. All right. Love you guys. Thank you again. It's Gundam. Appreciate everybody. We're 13 likes away from 1,000. Give it some love. I'll see you guys over on Cecil's chat. Say Cam, say Cam Gundam Raid in the oh, chat. Good Raid. night, everybody. We're going fluffy, but first lover boy. Good night, everyone. Thank you guys.